really loud on the sound check for Tierney's on Sunday for comedy. All right, well, it was now, now, now the world knows. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> you should be, Kev. Well, <laughs> David Adams here. Let me make sure this is working. Love see. you, David Adams. Is that coming through? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's coming through. Okay, we're Hold good. Hold on. Let's see. Check. What? You oh, no, I'm checking, I'm checking the old Mevo. All right, cool. Let's see. Hold on. Can I hear anything? Well, yeah, there it goes. It's good. I hear it. I hear it. You can, yeah, you're, now you're just, uh... Kev, we hear it. It's okay. All right. <laughs> It's one of my favorite theme songs of all time, by the way. What, I Walk Alone? Batista's, yeah. Ba -na 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 -na. All right. In his prime, he was so fucking good. We are recording. All right. We are getting on the butt. Get on that butt. And we are streaming live. And, pushy. Uh, oh, give us an intro. Pushy for the tushy. Yes, give us an intro. What? Give us an intro. Today on the Shining oh, Radio Corny Voice, tonight... On the Shining Wizards podcast, we cover money in the bank. We talk to the one and only most famous enhancement talent in the history of professional wrestling, Barry Horowitz, plus a whole lot of wrestling news, some sad, some fun. And picks. And picks. We got it all because we are all elite. We are the all elite wizards. Had to, had to. The following is a presentation of the Shining Wizards Network, broadcasting live on Rantium Radio and available on all podcast platforms and at shiningwizards.com. Find us on social media at Wizards Podcast. Our merchandise is available at shiningwizards.com slash merch. Do your Amazon shopping with us at amazon.shiningwizards.com and become a patron at patreon.com slash wizardspodcast. As always, thank you for your continued support and enjoy the show. This is Darby Allen, and you're listening to Shining Wizards. I have a small dick. I call it dick! Ladies and gentlemen, you are joining us live you on Ranty and Radio. You killed, my, you killed my drum solo. Well, your drum solo's over, dude. We gotta get the show rolling. Oh, all right. We think it's all about Kevin Joseph Garifo. It's all about all my time? drumming, man. Come on, man. I'm all about Mr. Drumming, man. Oh, good God. What an awful reference that was. That's incredible. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are live along with us here tonight. It's the two man group representing the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. Of course, it's Wrestling Talk. And talk about wrestling. Tony! Kevin! And tonight on the hotline in about 15, we are going to be joined by the one and only legendary, and it's fair to call him a legend because that's what he is. Dude, if you put him in the Hall of Fame today, I would not even bat an eyebrow. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Is that I mean, the expression? That's not the expression. Bat, bat an eye. Bat an eyebrow. No. Eyelash. Bat, bat, bat an, an eye. Bat, bat an, an eye. eye. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. Unless you're Sammy Callahan, you won't be batting any eyes tonight because we are talking to the one and only Mr. Barry Horowitz. Woo! A Sammy Callahan, Barry Horowitz reference. You like that? I found out. I uh, do. I also found out Sammy Callahan's going to be returning to Wrestle Pro. Pro. That's, yeah, that's right. That's pretty big. It's been what, like six, seven years since oh, he's. Oh God! It, I don't think it has been Wrestle Pro since he's been. No, there. definitely not. It's PWS. And now that, that was some good stuff. Him and yeah. Kevin Matthews. That was a killer, killer match. Dude, I remember that. Sammy Callahan's one of my favorite performers on the planet. Yeah, he's kind of gross though. He's incredible. He's drooling and spitting all over everybody. He's a he's a he's, he's a, a psycho. Beast. Yeah, he's, he's, he's nuts. He's he how you doing? Is. How how you doing? I'm doing better than the finish of that Money in the Bank pay per view. Oof. I'll tell you that much. I tell you, I didn't know if I was gonna get to watch MLW this week, and I actually did today, and I'm so glad I did. Because I know, like, lately I've been like, ah, this wasn't so good, whatnot. Great show. Absolutely yeah. great show. I'm glad I tuned in. For We're it. like the MLW, like, aficionado podcast now. Pretty much. Because we watch it every week. That's, well, like, the one show you can guarantee that we'll watch. Well, Kevin, you got to understand. What's I am an expert when it comes to MLW. That's true. I am an expert in a lot of professional wrestling. I bow to your expertise. And I was pretty expertitious. Is that what? a word? No. This past That's Sunday. That's like bad an eyebrow. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, I can make things up. That's true. I'm creative. You're you're good. Um, you're the best in the world at what you do. Well, Shane McMahon's the best in the world, as we learned. Fuck Shane McMahon. Oh, easy. Whoa, what? He's not here. Do you think Barry Horowitz will like that potty mouth of yours? That's when a he good point. Us? That's a very good point. Be respectful. Damn it. I love Barry Horowitz. We all love Barry Horowitz. Seven fifteen. Pat yourself on the back, because he will call in. Oh, no, we're, 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 call, call, we're yeah, calling we're Barry. That's how important Barry Horowitz is to the world of wrestling. We're I believe that. Him. Yeah, we have to call him. There's no other way around it. No, definitely not. So Definitely not. I'm excited. I'm more excited to talk about his his, uh, his Global Wrestling Federation days than his, I know du- you are. than his WWE days. When I told you that I spoke to him and we had him booked for Tuesday, you are like, yes, another global guy. I love I, it. Dude, global was such a fun time for me. It was such a short period in the history of wrestling, right. too. That's the strange thing about it. And the older you get, the more distant it becomes. But there are certain things that you just remember about global. Oh, yeah. I remember the Dark Patriot. I remember the Patriot. I remember Bad News Brown teaming with Big Bully Busick. I remember Chaz. I remember the the bungee cord match. I remember the Bar- handsome stranger. The handsome stranger, <laughs> I, uh, Marcus Alexander Bagwell, if mm-hmm. you will. I remember Barry Horowitz's time in Global. I remember him. Uh, we'll we'll save it for him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just. But you're excited. I get I it. am because. Three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon, whenever it was on ESPN, you go, you turn it on, you got wrestling in the middle of the week. Wrestling on a wrestling show, who would have thought? Wrestling on a wrestling <laughs> show, that fucking pink ring, whatever the fuck it was. Are you sure you're not confusing Glow with Global? No, it was Global. <laughs> I'm telling you it was Global. They had a red ring. Red uh, rum. I actually, I was actually reaching out to some of the former Glow girls, now that we mentioned Glow, to try to find out whatever happened to their ring, because I think that would be an awesome collector's item. What, do you want to be like... Kramer reviving the Merv Griffin show in his apartment. You know, would you put a glow ring in in your in your basement? It's funny you mention that because not so much Merv Griffin, but I did do a little research. Oh boy! To try to buy the floor from the Odyssey 2001. Do you know what that is? Is that the movie with the periscope and the? No, no. Odyssey 2001 was the dance club from Saturday Night Fever. You know the the floor that used to light up with all the patterns and shit? I yes. figured, yes, I figured yes, somebody yes, had yes. to have that somewhere. And it was actually up for auction probably about nine or ten years Jesus ago. Jesus Christ, it's got to be through the roof expensive. Well, here's the funny thing. Somebody actually went out of their way to go to the auction to try to buy it. And the, the, bid, the opening bid was really low. And before he even put a bid in, it went up. And then he's like, something smells funny. And then they completely removed it from the auction. So well, there were some chicanery I mean, and shenanigans. With that floor, I'm sure a lot of stuff smelled funny. Oh, it was probably <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> yeah. But I, but as something cool, it would have been like, you know what? If it was worth it. Like, look, if I had the money to pull together, I would have purchased the Silverdome years ago when it went up for sale. $300,000. <laughs> well, Could you imagine? Tony, 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 Tony. What? You would have bought the silver dome. Yes. Where would you put it? <laughs> Where in the world would you put the I silver dome? I would have dome? invited all my boys to go to Pontiac, Michigan. To we wouldn't be all your boys wouldn't be able to fill the first row of that. I fucking... would go to Pontiac, I would bring the glow ring, and we would reenact WrestleMania 3. With a glow ring? <laughs> None of what you're saying makes any sense, but I love it and I support it. <laughs> we would, well, we could get some Glow people probably now. Maybe we could get uh, Chavito or former guest John Morrison. Oh, you're talking like the series, you're yes, talking, obviously. You're not talking old. No, we go. We can get Ivory. We can get Lisa. I'm not even worried about Lisa. I'm more interested in like some of the other girls. Maybe the girls that didn't, you know, have this, the afterglow success. You know what I'm saying? In oh, wrestling. Well, they're uh, Tommy Fierro's back in the business, so he's doing a lot of stuff with the original glows with these '80s really? wrestling cons. Because I know, I know the uh, the three that have been going around are Lightning, Hollywood, who's a smoke show still, and Royal Hawaiian, who was one of Royal my Hawaiian. When I was a Royal Hawaiian. That's kid. what I say. Hula hula. The Jeff Cobb, the hula hula dancer. <laughs> Jeff Cobb, hula hula the pineapple guy. <laughs> yeah, that's what my absolute favorite wrestler ever in Ring of Honor. Oh boy, <laughs> hot take. 
Hey, only here at the Shining Wizards. Hey, Baza, my man, pots and pans. Baza's online. Oh, he's there. He's watching through Mevo. Oh, and I already told Baza that um, I will be getting together with him for the fifth annual Tony and Baza show. You've done that five times. I think this is going to be number five. It might be number six. It's definitely at least four times we've done it. Five time. Five, five time. time. Five time. Five time. Can you dig that, sucker? So how many people got tuned in? I see two. Uh, over three. Here. Of three. Us. <laughs> We're blowing up, people. You know We're what huge. it is. You know what it is. We haven't we haven't been putting out that we've been using the Mevo because we've just gotten back into using it. Right. I put know? it on the old Instagram today, but on my personal one. Ooh. Well, not only because I have I'm trying, and then I also told them to follow us on our page on Instagram because I'm trying to get better at posting on Instagram. Um, but I have. It makes sense for me to post at least something on my personal one because I have more followers than our podcast one. Wow! So if I can get oh, that, on Instagram, on Instagram, I, I, do we even do anything on Instagram with the show? Yeah, we do. Oh yeah, we I, to, I post at least one thing a day on Instagram. Really? Yeah. But I'm so far but out I, of Instagram. I, I, I unfollowed you. Really? Of course. You Why? Because you're not active. So sorry. Yeah. So sorry. I, I had followed you from both the because I wanted to hit the numbers better between our followers and our and who are following. So I unfollowed you. Wow. You're uh, a dirtbag. I'm not a dirtbag. You don't if you don't post anything within like the last month, I'm unfollowing you. Wow, so we should have like zero people following us now, right? No, because I post every day. I post every I, day. My feelings are hurt. I don't know if I can get through this Barry Horowitz interview. Stop now. it. <laughs> You don't, you're not a, you're a ghost on Instagram. I tag you on stuff. I didn't, you know what, to be honest with you, I didn't even know I was on Instagram. Until How do you not know that you have a social media profile? Because I think it just attaches to your Facebook profile, doesn't it? No, you have to choose the picture that you use. Do you I ha have a picture on? Yeah, it's the Shining Wizards Gold uh, logo. Oh, you see, that's my Twitter logo. That's how that got hooked up. It got hooked up between Twitter and, and Instagram. I also unfollowed you on Twitter. No, you did not. <laughs> no, I didn't. You, are, you, I bet you you did. No, I didn't. If I didn't have check, four thousand, check right now. I follow if, you. If I, I see, didn't have five thousand things running here, I, I see. I see your posts all the time, and where you post other shows from the network. So well, I, I have do. it set up. Anytime something hits the Audio Boom feed, so I you follow know. you. Be surprised. We get a lot of traction on Audio Boom. Listen, we are one of the OGs, man. We we originally got an Audio Boom before they were Audio Boom. Before they, they were. Audio boo. Audio boo. Like like our audio girl. Like our oh you my boo. What? Do the kids still say boo anymore? I think they say bay. Oh, it's bay now? I don't know what That's it is. It's so dumb. It why might not, just it might just be whore. Why can't you just say babe? Like what's the problem with an extra B? Are we are we running out of bees, Kevin? Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made Kevin we're, a corpse. We're, we're running out of a lot of things, Tony. Yeah, that's true. And a lot of it is time before we have Barry Horowitz on the oh, Shining that Wizards. That was a terrible hotline. segue. That was great. After you corpsed at my joke. <laughs> I didn't corpse. I just couldn't think of anything. You couldn't contain yourself. I couldn't think of anything clever to respond with. Because I was thinking of, what I was thinking of was the line from uh, from Half Bait. Yo, that's killer, B. Like, yeah, that, that guy called everybody B. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking of, but I couldn't get a line out. Isn't he it. the guy that told everybody off and then he said, you're cool and F you, I'm out of here? No, that was Jim Brewer. Oh, Jim Bruce? No, that was... That was the bee guy. Yeah, yeah, it was the bee guy. God, that was such a good movie, too. Great movie. You no, know I smoked pot with Jim Brewer. Get out of here, for real? Yep. Towson, when was this? Towson University. Oh. He was, was performing. Was he, oh, I was going to say. And Wait, the, were you like, oh, Mr. Brewer, I'm an aspiring comedian? No, I wasn't a comedian at this point. I was in college. How did you get hooked up with him? He was staying in the hotel that allows seniors to live if you have a certain grade point average. So this when you said seniors, I was thinking of like old old people. people. <laughs> no, but like like it, seniors in college, if they had a certain grade point average, they could live at the hotel for a nominal fee, and they happened to be recruiting me to pledge the fraternity, Teak, which is actually the Big Show's fraternity. Oh God, you were gonna you joined Teak? No, I didn't join Teak. I joined Phi Sigma Kappa or Phi Kappa Sigma, okay. but then I got kicked out because I punched the president in the face. Why did you do that? Because I thought he stole my Banana Republic jacket. Wait, is he the guy that you got into the fist fight with and then took a cab home with together? No, <laughs> no. Man, you were you were a brute in college. No, but I, those are the only. <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm not a tough guy. <laughs> it's you those sure are the, act like one. No, but. Every time I was smart in the way that I got into fights, 
I got into fights that I knew that would get broken up right away. Oh. So I was a little bitch, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. But uh, this guy, I thought he stole my $200 Banana Republic jacket, which as a kid fresh out of high school was a <laughs> shit ton of money. Which it still is a shit ton of money. Do you still have the banana? No, he, I thought I think I left it in the cab actually. <laughs> but I, I I thought I accused him of stealing it. He's like, get the fuck out of here! I, I punched him in the face and everyone tackled me. Wow! Yeah. Did you get beat up on the way out? Or? No. Did, was it one of those situations that they lifted you over your head? No. Nope. No, no. They were actually pretty cool about it because they respected my my moxie, I guess, for lack of a better for, word. For punching somebody in the mouth after they told you that they didn't steal your shit. Yeah. Well, he kind of he kind of got in my face, so I hit him before <laughs> I thought he got. Had the chance, so that's a true story, people. I I absolutely believe it. Uh, so then you wound up smoking with Jim Brewer. No, different story, different day. Oh, oh, because it was a yeah, it was a different fraternity gotcha. that was recruiting me, <coughs> and we went to the hotel room. He was in the hotel the next. He actually mentioned us on his stage during his show. Yeah, so Kevin Grifo and I. No, no, he didn't mention me. He mentioned. <laughs> he's like, we were all in the front. So he's like, man, I know these guys. They got a bong like a helicopter or some shit like that. I remember it. <laughs> Go Tigers! I, I don't know how to process that right now. That was oh, awesome. It's a true story, man. Well, for, for some more true stories, I think we're going to reach out to Mr. Horowitz. Let's call him up. Let's, uh, let's give him a call. Why can't. Um... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Why isn't it letting me call him? What's going on here? No, I don't want to... Uh, really? No, oh, man. Uh, no, just call him for... Uh, all right, I'm going to have to dial it in. Oh, here we go. Look at that. It worked. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> oh, boy. As we patiently wait. Oh, boy. Nah, I, 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 Hello. Hello, is this Mr. Horowitz? Yes, it is. It's Tony, brother. How are you? Good, Tony. How are you? Not too bad. We are live right now. We're broadcasting on TuneIn Radio. We are on RantyMRadio.com. We are also on Facebook via the Mio at Mia Mevo app. Oh, my God. Wow, I couldn't even say that. But, ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a proper introduction. I guess there is no introduction. One of the greatest performers in the history of pro wrestling. That's good. Don't take the losing streak for granted. He was the guy that made everybody look great, and he had a chance to shine as well. One and only, Mr. Barry Horowitz. It's thank Kevin you, and I. Thank to- you. I'm so happy to be doing the Shining Wizards. I love it. We are happy to have you. Like I told you earlier, Kevin is here, and Kevin's chomping at the bit to do some old school wrestling talk with you, sir. But first of all, how are you tonight? Pretty darn good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Barry, what what made you decide to get back out there into the old uh, into the into the media world and and get your and get some stories out there? Like, what made you try to jump back and get on the podcast loop? Well, ex- actually, I just you, you, it's one of those things you snooze, you lose, and I wasn't paying attention to social media. And I had some tragedies in the family. My daughter was sick, so family comes first. And put the career on the back burner for now. But now everything is cleared up. I've been training again back in the gym. Everything's everything's fallen into place, and I'm loving it. So uh, the worth the the wait was uh, definitely wor- worth waiting for. So you've always been you've always been kind of a of of a gym guy. What's a what's a day in the life of a workout for Barry Horowitz? I mostly train. Well, now I'm on a different training regimen. I'm always changing it up. But basically now, just uh, the comeback trail was was cardio six days a week, about 45 minutes to an hour, six days a week in the Florida sun, uh, outside uphill, downhill, some ab work. And it was just that because I had, a, had some injuries with sciatic nerve, a knee injury from heavy squats. And now for the last probably six months, five months, back in the uh, – gym uh the cardio dropped down a little bit but the cardio the gym is is a little bit different i'm i'm actually um working out of a garage not my own a friend of mine's and on purpose just that old school feeling just some old school 80s rock no people around just completely old school you know like going back like if you remember in um i think it was uh rocky three or four, four where they went to the tough gym apollo took them there and it's just everything is just old school. And that's what I wanted. Exercise I haven't did. And I'm in there at least an hour and a half to two hours. 
And then I'm doing anything anywhere from, wow, I do that, the weights, of course, the diet, back on all my supplementation. And I take care of all that because I'm a certified nutritionist because I went to school for that before wrestling at FSU. So probably between all of that I told you, the bonus is I'm probably doing, um, uh, and this is still weak for me, about 1,000 crunches a week for abs, but the push-ups are close to 1,000 a week. Mm, that's just, and that's um, I, I wasn't able to do those before, shoulder injuries, tricep injury, but now everything's back. So I'm doing this for a while, and then a couple more months I'll probably – Drop this routine, and then I'm joining a new gym, just like a new diet, whole new atmosphere, uh, close to my house, and all innovative stuff. And it'll be other things that I'll incorporate. So I'm always changing it up. It's unbelievable. Awesome. And and that's, uh, that, that's, that's about it. I mean, uh, <laughs> probably, that's all? That's all? I mean, well, that's all. Right. And then my diet, of course, is pretty darn good. I mean, I weigh 220, but I consume about 250 a day in protein. And then your basic carbs, your sweet potato, your rice, a lot of tuna, a lot of egg whites, a lot of protein powder, a lot of good protein bars, a lot of everything natural, a lot of organic products, a lot of water, at least a gallon a day, if not more. I try to keep the sodium and sugar very low, and I got to have, I need at least eight hours sleep always. No, that, that that's makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And my next, my next investment is going to be a portable hyperbaric chamber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. I've, yep. I believe. I have, yeah, a hundred percent believe that after everything that you just told us. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things I want to ask you before we get into a little bit about your career, you said you you went to school, you studied to become a nutritionist. Obviously, it's, it sounds like to me like I don't know too much about the nutritionism myself, but it sounds mm-hmm. to me you know what you're talking about. And another thing that you're absolutely known for throughout your career is, Mm -hmm. I don't want to say frugal, but you never got into the uh, the the partying lifestyle that a lot of the boys went through. And it's funny, and it's funny you mention that because especially in the '80s, like a lot of mm -hmm. the guys were known for, you know, doing things that Mm -hmm. maybe they're not so Mm -hmm. proud of these days, or you know, pretty much spending their money before they could even get it home to you know to put it away Uh to put it to good use. How did you manage to stay away from all that when the temptation was always there? Well, number one, number one, had a family. I'm a grown-ass man, and I'm not a follower. I'm a leader. I've always been that way throughout my whole athletic, whole adult lifehood. I'm just not doing it, and it's not happening. Uh, would it further my career? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, if if I could sit here and say um, – that I should have did that, and it would, I still would go with what I'm doing now, and I still do it. Uh, you know, I'm never into the partying scene. I treat, when I leave the house, and I got plane ticket in hand, it starts right there. It starts right there. What's next? You get on the plane. I'm flying into, I don't know, a Vegas or something, or Allentown, Pennsylvania. You know, get the hotel room, get a rent-a-car, whatever they have set up for me. Um it's all business. It's not for sightseeing. It's not to go to movies, this, this, and that. I mean, if I'm in a place like when I was in Tokyo or whatever, and you had a couple of days off, that's a different story. But still, training, rest, eating. That's feed the machine, get it ready, and treat this like a shoot. Don't go overboard, but don't go underboard. Keep it right in the middle, and you should do well. And these guys that blow their money or – have a $900 bar tab at 4 in the morning, well, good luck for them. And, you know, they're probably complaining now. Or they complain about um, not taking care of themselves. Well, when you're making that kind of money, you can get some insurance. You can go to a chiropractor. You could eat right. You could train. You know, that's up to you. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. But I'm not doing it. Can you talk- I'm going to take care of it. Can you talk a little bit about... Uh, and I don't want to get too deep into like the financial aspect of wrestling, but back when Mm -hmm. you were, when you were just, you were on every show, but you know, Mm -hmm. you were at a lower spot in the card for the most part. I mean, we'll call a spade Mm -hmm. a spade here. Uh, but can you Mm -hmm. tell us what the pay scale was kind of like back then? Well, I don't want to discuss that. Let's put it this way. It was good. Believe me. It was good. I was on the road more than I was off. So it was good. I mean, 
you know, extra little things, behind the scene things like um remember that uh pile driver album or something Absolutely. Came out yeah. back in the day? <laughs> you know, when I, I was I was I was in that and a lot of times you don't see me, a lot of times you do. That's that's extra, that's bonus, stuff like that. Uh, so it adds up and then, you know, royalty checks and so forth. And now it's even, now it's at a whole different level. So, but, uh, it was, let's put it this way. It was very good to me. Right. And I totally didn't mean to overstep in that no, line of questioning. Fine. It nope, was no problem. It was just something curious to me. Cause I, I'm always curious about like placement on the card and how that works mm-hmm. for people's lifestyles. That's all. Sure. Sure. So, yeah. So let's talk, let's get into, into the career. Um, what, what do you think, what was your like shining star moment for you? Like where you realized where you were, what you were doing and how awesome it was to be exactly where you were. Well, a couple things. First was, um, I guess I, in this order, you know, winning the Florida heavyweight title from Mike Graham in his hometown and, my state, uh, that was pretty big. I mean, that was, that was pretty big. And then, you know, um, the global light heavyweight title was pretty nice. cool. And, um, just, and then of course, working for the WWF, the lights, the glitter, the pyro. Um, then when I got the push with skip, I mean, I was on, I was basically on every pay-per-view. I was the captain of my team on survivor series King, you know, was in King of the ring in your house matches, did a commercial with Hakushi for, uh, Mattel's, uh, yep. karate fighters, yep. karate knockout fighters. Wow. Karate. Fighters. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's pretty darn good. <laughs> so I don't want to jump ahead. I, I, there's so much I want to talk about, <laughs> but the, mm-hmm. that you mentioned the, the, the push with skip. What was that like? And I'm sure you get this question a lot nowadays that you're back out there. Um, mm-hmm. But that moment with Skip, you got the win. Um, mm-hmm. You're getting, you're getting a, a, the the run that you may have always wanted. H- how did that mm-hmm. feel? Did did it ma- Was it that big a deal, or was it just business as usual for you? A little bit of both. It was a big deal because that's what I strive for: always to get a push in the WWF. I mean, it's the mecca of all wrestling, and to get a push, you know, anything is better than nothing. And I was uh, ecstatic about it, but I didn't let it get to my head or anything. I just handled it business as usual and progress and make it even better. Do you think the fans were more excited? Because this was weird for you, because you were always known as a heel, and you were wrestling mm-hmm. a heel, and you got a win mm-hmm. over a heel. So do mm-hmm. you think the fans were more excited for you than maybe you were for yourself? Because it was, it was, I, I remember don't... it. I was like 12 years maybe old. Maybe a little bit of both. What's that? Maybe a little bit of both. Because I remember being like, oh, my God, what just happened? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's <and> the idea. <laughs> def- and no, I'm, I'm t- I'm, this is straight up honest just from my memory because mm-hmm. I remember it like it was yesterday. And the fact that you were always a bad guy and you were always the antagonist, you know, patting yourself on the back, all that stuff. And mm-hmm. then you get a win over mm-hmm. a heel and all of, a, all, all of a sudden you become like the most beloved character in the whole company. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool, yeah. I prefer heel, but uh, yeah, whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did that did that mean anything to you playing a babyface for the first time? Oh, not, maybe not the first uh, time, but the... a little bit. Yeah, I had to change things around a little bit. But nowadays, you know, everybody's a heel, everybody's a babyface. It it really doesn't matter. It's it's about entertaining and getting the match over. Yeah, and that's what and that's what you did. And you got and you got to yep. work with so many like people who are on the cusp of becoming big names at that point. I know uh, you had teamed on and off with the One Two Three Kid. You had matches mm-hmm. against Steve Austin, uh, Triple H, mm-hmm. uh, Savio- everybody. Yeah, I, everybody but Hogan. Yeah, I mean, but it's it's a who's who's list, and and a lot yeah. of stuff that I didn't even remember. Like you actually had mm-hmm. a a shot against Jeff Jarrett when he was the IC champ. Oh yeah, like that's yep. big stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, is there, a, is there a question? Awesome. Is there a question there, Tony? I'm I am just mesmerized. <laughs> um, you know what? Let me let Come me. Come on, Tony, quit marking out and give me the question. <laughs> How did you wind up teaming up with Reno Riggins? Was that just something like, hey, let's just put Barry with Reno and and figure something no, out? No, because I, well, I was wrestling in USWA for Jared Promotions, and Reno was bro- breaking in. Uh, he was taught by the great uh, Tojo Yamamoto. Yes, rest in peace. And uh, became friends with him. I lived in Nashville for 10 years. 
and uh, just became friends. And I think uh, they seen it and just put us together. I mean, we went overseas together, did a little uh, couple, uh, God, about a week straight with the Bushwhackers. And uh, yeah, and Reno and I are, you know, we're friends too. And he's uh, he's my style of type of wrestling too. He's a technician also. Back back in in that era, there were guys mm-hmm. that like were always considered, for lack of a better term, enhancement talent. But it was guys like mm-hmm. that that are always in the same group to me are you, mm-hmm. and even later like Jim Brunzel, Jim Power, Steve Lombardi. Um, yep. Was there some sort of like camaraderie between you guys? Was there like a different level mm-hmm. of friendship between you? Or is... I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes there wasn't. It it was strange. Um, <sighs> Yeah, there was some. Some were, you know, uh, we we were just, you know, teammates, and then some were outcasts, or I don't know, maybe they're just grunted, or maybe they just didn't um, want to hang out. I don't know. Yeah, because for some reason, I always like it's such a weird, it's such a weird thing looking back as a fan. Wait, you thought they were all like boys? I thought they, they were all... <laughs> you know, they had, they all had something in common because like. I mean, Barry Horowitz was a star. At, you know, Jim Powers was a star, but then they would mm-hmm. always be used to put other guys over. And no, I, guess, I got you. So, like, I wondered if there was ever a camaraderie there, just on based on what you're. I think a little bit. I think a little bit. It depends on the situation, but I think a little bit. Right. All right. So that that's basically what I wanted to know there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, one thing a lot of people may not know. I know you mentioned you worked a lot in Florida. You. Uh, you worked with Mike Graham, who you consider to be, I, I guess, for lack of a better term, a role model. But maybe not a lot of people mm-hmm. know that you trained under Boris Malenko. Wow. What was mm-hmm. that like? The best. The best. The best ever. That's. I'm going to give it to you in this order, okay? Building the foundation of Barry Horowitz. First of all, back then, it was hard to break in. I mean, if you just said, I want to be a pro wrestler, and you go down to Tampa and... Basically, you're going to get a tryout with Hiro Matsuda or somebody of that, and they're going to discourage you. They're going to try to wear you out, blow you up, break your leg, something. Uh, see how tough you are. So that was tough right there, just getting in. And I had a friend of a friend that um, I never get to mention on interviews, and I, I want to do this because it's it's very important to me to give him this much respect and props. His name is Lenny Greenberg. He's a multimillionaire, and he owns, to this day, I think, he's passed away, Starkey Road Auto Parts in Seminole, Florida. It's huge. It's acres and acres. He's a, he's a very well-respected businessman. Friend told me of a friend, and he, I, he introduced me to him, and he says, okay, I think I could do something for you. I, I have connections. I know people. And he introduced me to some business people, and then they set up – this thing with Malenko, like basically like a um, like a tryout in an interview. I went to a judo school owned by Ed Malley. He's a judo champion. To this day, I think he's in his 80s, and I'm pretty sure he's still alive. But went to this judo school. Now remember that it's old school. It's it's mats, and I, I signed up with Malenko, and I was ecstatic. And maybe it was 20 of us. And really, out of that class, I stayed there a year and a half. Only two of us really made it. I mean, made it. Uh, nothing against the other guys, but the drive wasn't there, and it was me and Al Perez. Nice. Wow. That's a nice And uh, Yeah, yeah. Well-respected athlete. Good guy. I haven't talked to him or seen him since we were partners in uh, All Japan, and that's in the 90s. So I think I'm going to be seeing him pretty soon, though, at a reunion in Florida. So that's uh, pretty interesting. But uh, I was uh, – Trained with Malenko, and let me tell you something. I was taking falls, bumps, backdrops from the likes of Jody Malenko, Shelly Malenko, Carl Gotch, Carl von Stroheim, and the great Malenko himself. And then we moved into a mattress factory, yeah, which is about 104 in the summer and 40 degrees in the winter. One ring, then it turned into two rings. And this is after, you know, I was working a part-time job training. I'd go there for three hours, three to four times a week. Barely any breaks, anything like that for a year and a half. That's how you train. That or get broken in in Japan. That's how you respect the business. That's how you learn everything. And what was built there between uh, Lenny Greenberg, uh, Boris Malenko, the training is the foundation 
of Barry Horowitz. The getting polished was hitting the road and traveling six nights a week with the likes of Rick Steamboat, Jay Youngblood, Bob Orton Jr., Rick Flair, Johnny Weaver, Wahoo McDaniel. The list goes on and on. And what is it? Rufus R. Jones, uh, Jimmy Valiant. What do you do? Shut up and listen and watch all the matches. That's how you become a better athlete, a better pro wrestler. Watch that, films, everything. And I was doing it all. That's a hell of a crew. Are those names you just mm-hmm. rattled off right there? Oh, yeah. I, I, I probably left Bugsy McGraw. Uh, I, I left out, I'm, I'm sure, you know, I don't mean to, uh, Chavo Guerrero Sr. Uh, man, there's a, there was a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, Nikita Koloff, Ivan Koloff, Don Kernodal, Sergeant Slaughter. Oh, God. I know. It's... It- we're like you have like we're, we're we do this every week and we've had many many guests on hundreds but, of guests. But what you just said, just like we're sitting here, and we're just like our jaws are like dropping because we're <laughs> because at the end of the day, just we're talking all, the tr- just talking the truth. Yeah, Wait until the book comes out. We're all fans at heart, and we love like I'm sure our our diehard listeners love Barry Horowitz and love the history of Barry Horowitz. Um, I'm gonna jump around a little bit here with these next couple questions. Um, sure. Uh, Global Wrestling Federation. Here we go. You, you mm-hmm. mentioned you mentioned uh, becoming the light heavyweight champion, Tony. I believe Twice. two two yes. times, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what I want to ask you about is when mm-hmm. you became the winner, Barry Horowitz, and I think you, that did that start when you beat Terry Daniels, and then you had like that belt with like, the black belt I, with the silver yeah, plate. Yeah, I think that was all Eddie Gilbert's idea. And yeah, I mean it was cool. It's exposure and uh, in the iconic Dallas uh, Sportatorium where the Von Erichs and Flair and everybody else made famous. Uh, yeah, it was cool. I mean, yeah, I was there for maybe a year. The GWF. I, I like the commentators Scott Hudson and yep. Craig. Um, oh, what was his name? Last name Craig Wiseman? No, Craig Wiseman. I, I, I don't think it's Wiseman. But Craig. Anyway, those guys were fantastic and. Uh, it was cool there. It was uh, there was uh, a lot of people. Sam Houston was there. The Handsome Stranger, aka Buff Bagwell, yep. the One Two Three Kid, uh, Lightning Kid. Excuse me. Correct. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was. Uh, God, Rod Price. I remember Ch- a bunch of people. Ch- there. Ch- Chaz and Tugboat Taylor, and uh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And then they Tugboat had the, Taylor, Chaz. They had the uh, yeah. that that bungee cord match. It was Chaz <laughs> and somebody. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> um, like I, I used to like wrestling on ESPN is is so weird to me now. Thinking back about it, did you guys realize? I mean, you guys were kind of neck and neck with ESPN, kind of breaking out. Not neck and neck, but you mean you were a part of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. did, so did you realize what kind of exposure you were possibly getting being on like the first? Oh, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I loved it. It's awesome. Heck yeah. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. great. So. Do, so th- does does that do you, first of all do you still have does, does anyone know where that belt is? No, <laughs> I have no idea. That's a good question. I have and I pretty and I keep tabs of a lot of stuff, but that one eludes me. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Well, you know what? Maybe <laughs> we'll maybe we'll make that our mission to try yeah. to track down that belt. Well, we we are Kevin and I are the belt marks of the show. Like we we, we love belts, <laughs> like pictures, belts that we never knew existed. Anything about them, like you know, from the from the most garbage looking belts to the most beautiful belts, we uh, mm-hmm. we are definitely into them. Uh, let me ask you. Let me let me switch gears for you real quick. Um, sure. You were part of one of the greatest streaks ever in pro wrestling. You uh, you got to work Bill Goldberg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what what was that like being part of history and uh and I guess I uh, guess the uh the Barry Horowitz way, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was cool. It was uh like you said, business as usual to me. I mean I've wrestled everybody. Um yeah, it was cool. Let me There's ask nothing, you, you know. Hmm? How did it get how did you go to uh to WCW? How did that deal kind of work out and what was your um were you just like you know brought in for certain shows? I mean, I remember seeing you a no. lot. No, actually, I my my run was up. I think it could have progressed longer in the WWF, but that's not my decision. I'm still grateful, so I'm not whining or anything. But I think you know other people have did it, but that's fine. And I uh, went to WCW after I finished up there, and uh, basically stayed there until Vince bought it. 
That's right. You were there. You were there for for yeah. a long time. Yeah. You know time. what sucks is when he bought it. Two weeks before, I was doing an angle with Alan Funk, and it was going to progress. Oh yes. And we were really getting into it. Kiwi, it right? Kiwi, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I remember that. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry. Go yeah. ahead. You know, it just came to my mind. I don't mean to interrupt you. I forgot that I was the third bird also. The third bird. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was with the Freebirds, and uh, we did some makeup thing on my face. We only did it a couple times for TV, and I was called the third bird. This this just completely escapes me. You're going to have to elaborate Mm -hmm. on this one. What's that? You gonna you got it? You got to fill us in. How did how does this come about? That's it. That I don't know exactly. Michael Hayes thought of something, and I don't know if it was once or twice on TV. I don't know what the reason was, but I was happy. It was cool. I mean, yeah, the third bird. I am gonna have to look this up. I forgot was... about that actually. <laughs> it just—I don't know what rose through my mind. It just came through my mind there. And That's so funny. Yeah, Man, it's so great. Yeah. When you said third bird, I thought maybe it was like the knights you were thinking of for Survivor Series. Oh yeah, I was gonna go there too. No, <laughs> that's just plain blunt. Red Knight. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Red Knight. <laughs> Did you enjoy your time in WCW working for Eric Bischoff and, and the likes? Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I only talked to Eric maybe once, and uh, yeah, uh, it was fine. Yeah. Nitros were cool. Um, the other show, the Thunders, and then the Saturday main event, Saturday night show. It was pretty cool going to Universal Studios in Florida and yeah, it was really cool. Mm-hmm. And it's so weird because I like I'm looking at the at the names of guys that you had the mm. chance to work with, and once mm. again another who's who of wrestling from a complete, oh, yeah. from a completely different well maybe not completely different but just like a whole other generation of wrestlers coming in. You know, like mm-hmm. I, like I'm looking like um, you know Alex Wright who was an up and comer at the point Disco Inferno yeah. you know Wrath all those guys and of course yeah. you know part of um part of a uh, Goldberg streak. Um, you know, stuff with Jim Duggan. So it's like Barry Horowitz yeah. has wrestled anybody who's been anybody in the business. Pretty much. From the eighties forward into the two thousands. That's that's it's insane. I'm sorry if I'm having another mark out moment, sir, but oof. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I'm gonna quote I'm gonna quote Tim White Lightning Horner. And he said this about himself, myself. It's nothing bad. Uh Brad Armstrong was part of this too. Uh we're star makers. Right, and it's not a bad thing. See what at I'm all. saying, absolutely, star maker. When I was a kid, I was always fascinated with guys that you know that would go out there and make everybody look good. You know, guys mm-hmm. like your Jose well, Luis Rivera and your oh you know, god, and your Rick Jose Hunters. Estrada, Matt Luis Rivera, yeah, Johnny Rods. But think about it in the wrestling business, guys. There's got to be a winner. There's got to be a loser. It's all over. It's in MMA. It's in football. It has to be. Not everybody could be. Kevin Nash. Not everybody could be Bret Hart. Not everybody could be Shawn Michaels. It can't be. It it won't get over. It'll be boring. You can't have that. Do you do you think that that um, that's a lost mindset these days, where a lot of the guys, or maybe even even more of the guys, like don't mm-hmm. you know don't really necessarily follow that? I mean, like we've had stories that we've been following lately when it comes to guys like an Austin Aries or like a or they're a, very protective of or, their their egos. Yes, very of of their spots of like you know uh, they're they they well, don't want to lose. You know, like uh, it's, your thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I was never, ah, uh, I was never, it's a, it sounds like an insecurity thing. I don't, I don't know. Right. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, all I worried about is, you know, I knew I'd take care of my matches and do what I was told and what have you. But, um, yeah, I was just, my main concern was just keep on wrestling and, and working and being booked and stuff. Not, not about well, I need to, you know, I'm 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 leaving or I'm quitting because you're, you know what I mean? I mean, if if you're really worried about your your career total or your win loss record, maybe you should join MMA because you'll get a tune up in about one minute after you get knocked out or stretched or submitted or tapped out, sure real well. quick. Yep. <laughs> so if you're a tough guy, why don't you just go in there? You know, with likes of Kem Shamrock, Tito Ortiz, or Frank Mir. Matt Hughes, Randy Couture, they'll tune you up real quick. 
That first that first name you mentioned, Ken Shamrock. I've read a, I've read something I didn't know about you as well. <laughs> you you, you, you know that? where I'm going. Your first run in WWF. You actually got to work with Ken Shamrock. What was oh that? yeah yeah what was that like? He came in at, I think ninety five. Not great great guy, a uh, very respectful. Caught on to the pro wrestling business pretty cool. Did excellent in MMA. I respect him a lot. I, I haven't seen him since probably ninety five. Trying to think. Pretty sure. Yeah, he was Intercontinental Champion. Then he went back to MMA and did well. Yeah, so. we we had him on the show a few years ago. Awesome guy to talk to. Yeah. He had some great stories. Yeah, he's a good guy. And a lot he's of real people, good guy. A lot of an athlete. They don't realize that he actually started in pro wrestling before he wound up going to Pancrase and doing the uh, right. UFC stuff. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you know, people yeah. people in the mid '90s they see Ken Shamrock coming in like, wow, he's the MMA fighter, but they don't realize that no, he was right. a trained pro wrestler yeah. before he even touched MMA. You know, it's funny, too. You ever watch that show back in the day that with Chuck Norris, um, Walker, Texas Ranger? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> How about when they dedicated that? Well, not dedicated. had an episode about prison fighting. Who's the star? Frank Shamrock. Yeah. Frank, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Back in the day when he was he was the crap. I mean, Frank, <laughs> Sean, Fr Frank Shamrock was, you know, he's good. Real good. All of them, the entire yeah, the Shamrock Boys, man. I would I would never mess with either one of them. <laughs> no, not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Barry, let me switch mm -hmm. gears to a complete, basically a complete one eighty right here. Um, sure. We have a third shining wizard. He's not here tonight. His name is Matt. He had a question for you. Um, we're in addition to being belt marks, we love wrestling figures and action figures. I know where this is going. Um, but I have to ask because it bothers me and it bothers Matt <laughs> and it bothers Tony. Why did mm -hmm. we never get? A Barry Horowitz action figure. Well, okay, there was a shirt. There's a trading card. Yes. There is an action figure deal. We're working on it right now. It's in the process. And there is, if you go to um, my Facebook or if you go to the Internet, you will see me posing with it, the prototype of it. Um, and it's really cool. Uh, but we're in the process of working a deal where that will be done probably by the end of the year or in the middle of the year. And it's really cool. It's the, I think they're going to use the old school of blue trunks, black boots, and possibly maybe the mullet. I'm not sure. <laughs> we could have both, actually. That'd so be that would awesome. be cool. A, a, a variant. A mullet variant. Yeah. That would be so cool. <laughs> yeah. If yeah, because you, you cut that. I think when, when you went to WCW, you, you cut that thing off. Actually, I cut it. I cut it in WWF. Did you? Yeah, actually, no, yeah, I, just I, got, I do remember that. I just yeah. got tired of it, actually, and just, uh, yeah, I just got tired of it. Now my hair is cut like Blake Shelton. <laughs> it is. No, I believe it. It so happens. I've had it before him, but I'm a country music fan, so that's my hobby. I, I mean, that and Madden. Well, oh, wow. Well, if you're ever up in New Jersey, I got the perfect uh, well, per perfect bar for you to come to listen to some country music. Barry will be. Well, I'm going to be. Yeah. I'm going to be in Jersey in two weeks for a huge legend show, June 1st in Monroe. That's Good. right. New Jersey. Beautiful, beautiful Monroe. Oh, it's Le big. Yep, me, and Reno, me, and Reno, me and Reno Riggins will be side by side at the table doing the signings. Wait, wait. So Reno Riggins is coming up here to do the... To... Yes, he is. Wow. Dude. Oh, that's yeah. That's a hot take that, right that's there. A, that's, a, that's a game changer. No pun that intended. It is a game changer. Yeah. If you'd like to see Barry, head on over to legendsofthering.com. That's next Saturday, June 1st. Uh, that's in Monroe. Yeah. And uh, let me give out the Facebook page real quick. It's facebook.com slash official Barry Horowitz. I know he's yep. close to that 5,000 friend mark, but please give him a follow. Check out the picture of the yep. prototype, too. I sent a request. I'm looking for a response. So you're too late. Son. I know. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> Barry. Yeah, that thing is, uh, the Facebook thing is really cool. It, it keeps people in touch with everything and also... If people are uh, trying to get get promoters and say it's it's a little bit for everybody and it's been doing well it's it's only been it's only been up and running maybe three weeks and it's it's unbelievable. Um, my buddy Del Wilkes, aka the Patriot, he's on Facebook every day and he says every time you post something you get 400 to 800 likes. He says that thing is incredible. Yep. So. I said, wow, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Dell's another cool guy. I chat with him uh, periodically. We love Dell Wilkes. Yes. <laughs> Dell Wilkes is awesome, fantastic athlete, uh, and he's a, good, he's a good guy. I consider him a friend. And, you know, uh, I forgot who told me this, but if you want a friend in the wrestling business, buy a dog. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's I such think, a great line. I think that's the perfect way to 
Well, I did want to tell you one story. You you said you worked in all Japan. Uh, you never had a chance to work with anybody like a Stan Hansen or anyone like that, did you? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. Now, Del- Rest- now I- wrestled against him and was his partner with Johnny Ace in a six man. Oh wow. Okay. So oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I asked when Dell was on the show. I asked him, "What what's mm-hmm. it like to take the lariat?" And he said, "What he said the trick is just to get in as close as you can because if you don't, he'll kill you." He's- He's right. He's exactly right. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. That is. And awesome. Dell and Stan are good buddies. Oh yeah. That's the funny They're thing good too. Friends. Like, like Stan would beat the hell out of people, but you you buddies with everybody. Mm-hmm. One of my all time favorites, Stan Hansen. Any any good stories you got from Japan? Not really. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I can't. Hmm. No, just that I enjoyed it there. The people are so respectful, and the food was awesome. The traveling was awesome. I mean, I got to go across the longest bridge in the world on a uh, tour bus. Then uh, I got, was on some kind of, uh, what was it? I'm trying to think. Oh, the boat. The boat was so big, the tour bus could fit on it, and it would take it like a ferry across waters. I was on the bullet train. That was incredible, and couldn't even, couldn't even tell you were on a train. It's incredible how fast it went. And just um, the wrestling fans are just uh, utmost respect. And that downtown Tokyo, the Ginza area, it's just phenomenal. It was just, uh, it was just very good. I felt very safe there, too. That's one thing. We Hotels hear. were beautiful. Yeah, it's one, that's a, pretty much the story we hear from everybody that's gone to Japan about right. the people yeah, being Japan respectful. is beautiful. Love um, the Tokyo area, which is the most expensive. That in Hong Kong. Did you happen to try uh, Ribera Steakhouse while you were there? You know, I've never been there, and I've did almost everything I've wanted to bucket list in my career, and that was one of them, and I never got – and then I hear from other people, it's not a big deal, Barry. It's just a little place or a little crap hole or something. <laughs> I said, really? Yes. yes. It's not like what you're thinking and, you know, get the jacket and all that stuff, so – Oh, well, you can't do everything, but I did mostly everything I wanted to except Ribera's. <laughs> well, Who knows? It's, Never know. Yeah, it's not Still too late. Get there. If you want to book Barry Horowitz, Facebook.com slash official Barry Horowitz. Yeah. Let's get him the hookup, get him back to Japan. Yeah. I'd love to see you yes, check that the, one off the list. The, the new invented Mr. Technical Barry Horowitz. Oh, there you go. That's fucking genius. That's him. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm Kevin's, so, now, Kevin's, where, where are you guys exactly from? We're we're both from yeah, New we're, Jersey. We're all from Jersey. This, That's right. You know, we're broadcasting That's right, because from town. You know the deal about that. You could tell a guy from New Jersey, but you can't tell him much. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, <boy. laughs> we're 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 right outside uh, Newark, right outside the airport. Right outside basically. Newark, in a stone's throw from the Meadowlands. Yeah. And uh, oh my God. About twenty five <laughs> half hour outside of New York City. Well, that, depending on traffic. Depending on traffic. Yeah. Right. Which been there, done that. Been in those little towns, Elizabeth, Carteret, yep. all those Edison, Woodbridge. I think lived you did, in Belmar for two years. Didn't you do? Didn't you do a signing at Russell Pro at some point recently? Am I making that up? Or yes, I did. You did. Okay, I thought yeah. I saw you there. So, so there's that. So you're very familiar with New Jersey. Oh yeah. yeah. Belmar. Yeah, Barry That's... Horowitz is all over, like Coca-Cola's all over America. <laughs> <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll get to know Monroe quite well next week. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to it. We pl- right. we plugged Legends of the Ring. We plugged the Facebook. We have the fact that the action figure's coming. We know uh, Reno I'm Riggins is going to be joining you. So excited about mm-hmm. that action figure. At Legends. Is there anything else that we can plug before we let you go, Barry? Anything else that you want to yeah, mention? I'm trying to, th- I'm trying to think because my main thing was um, – was to you know uh, everything that you guys asked, but it was very important to me uh, about Lenny Greenberg. He's a he's a great man, and it bothers me a little bit. I guess I got caught up in things. This is years ago that I really never got to invite him to a match like uh, the uh, iconic Bayfront Center, the Fort Hesterly Armory, the Lakeland Civic Center. These are all iconic buildings in <clears throat> excuse me in Florida, and I never got to do that. Um, he's busy. I got busy on my career. It wasn't like I got the big head. It was just, you know, you just get busy and you forget, and it's a bad thing to forget. So uh, if his family's listening or what have you, I've spoke to him before. You know, I deeply apologize. And uh, just a great man because if he didn't introduce me, I don't know where I would be right now. I don't know if I would have got in on my own. I don't know. But I'm not going to question that. I'm going to question that he opened the door. 
and I shut it. That's a great moment. Yeah, man. That's a great moment yeah. right there. Yeah. And, think- and also the Boris Malenko, because the way guys are getting broken in, I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody. There's great trainers out there. But, you know, if you're trained by somebody that's been in the wrestling business two years and you're getting trained for six months, that ain't getting it. Yeah. That ain't getting it. Mm-mm. They could use somebody like you down at the uh, Performance Center, honestly. Believe me, I've already – thanks. There's another plug because I will – that is my forte is inspirational speeches, talking to guys, talking about the business. There's, there's – I think Pat Patterson said it well one time. He says – how did he say this? It was like um, 70% of the business is in the locker room, 30% is in the ring. So think about it, the locker room, the networking, the talking, the respect. There's, there's a lot of things that are you know behind the scenes that right. people need to be taught and learned and respected. And I could, I could go into Monroe, New Jersey. I could go into any of your independent uh, leagues in Jersey, Boston, wherever, Alabama, Tennessee. I could tell as soon as I walk in, if there's students there, how respectful they are and if they're real. If they're faking it, if they're real, but most of them, they're not faking. They they don't know how to, so they're being sincere. That's where I have respect because I was taught that too. You may be a little bit nervous, but if you're walking around and thinking you're ten foot tall and bulletproof, I have no time for you. <laughs> that that uh, we're gonna let you go, but that was uh, that was something that that triggered another question for me. No, go ahead, go ahead. Because uh, because I spend a lot of times in, in in locker rooms, and I get nervous when I see stars. Like mm-hmm. I, I saw you at that Russell Pro show, and I felt weird, yeah. and I didn't come and say hello. I didn't, I didn't. Should have. I know, I'm a, but I'm a jerk. So like, <laughs> it's it's so weird for me. I get super nervous. Like, and to the, I've been doing this for eight years, and I still get nervous every time when I see somebody uh, that that I look up to, and I feel weird going up to them. Is that the next time? Sorry, no, go ahead, time go you do that, I'm going to drop toe hold you and then put the shin and no maki on you. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> and I bet you don't even know what that word means, the shin and no maki, a.k.a. in America, the Cobra Clutch. Oh, <laughs> boy, oh, boy. It just, it's Who so... made it famous, the shin and no maki, Mr. Saito. Yep. Oh, dropping knowledge. And you will be sleepy, Oh, heck time. yeah. <laughs> don't challenge me on it. No, don't. never. Don't even. Not even. Never. <laughs> Listen, Barry Horowitz, I'm not going to challenge you on anything. Because remember, remember now, guys, there's a lot of great wrestlers out there, but Barry Horowitz wrestles great. Awesome. 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 We got to get Barry down at the Performance Center. We got to get him in the WWE Hall of Fame. Got to. Absolutely. I'm ready to train people. I'm enthused. I love it. It's a passion. I don't need need books. I don't need pen and paper i don't need notes i don't need anything everything's in the old computer upstairs love it beautiful fucking love this it. was a blast barry we got to have you on again real soon oh definitely i i find yeah i'd love it awesome man. heck yeah the shining wizards are the or the she is it <laughs> <laughs> all right barry barry we hope you had a good time because we sure did i did so. thank yes. you guys all right enjoy your night brother we'll be in touch you you too, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Barry. Bye, Barry. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a good night. You Likewise. Too. Oh, my God. Barry Horowitz. Dude, that... I say this a lot after interviews. One of my... That, hands down, one of my favorite. That was great. Of all time. I hope I hope we did it justice to, to our fans out there. Oh, absolutely. And you know what the great thing is? Like, he... Like, he's like, I don't like doing anything on social media. I like doing things by, you know, over the phone. So, like, he's, like, one of the few guys that I've actually, like, talked to to set this whole thing up. Just amazing. Dude. Just amazing. Like, like conversations with him, I could have stood on the phone with him for an hour. That's how easy it is to talk to him. More, oh, see, Matt dealt with Vader. Matt said Vader was a talker. Well, <laughs> Matt was also having problems with Vader, wasn't he? <laughs> no, was he? I thought he was. No, I think Vader just wanted to talk to him about random shit. Oh, he did. Eventually, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, I don't think Matt had problems with Vader. I, I don't thought he did. did I he? thought Vader was trying to shake him down, and then he changed oh, his mind. Oh, at first, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. R.I.P. Vader. We miss you, buddy. Uh, you smelly bastard. Kevin, we have so much more I to know. cover. So. After this. Well, I well, fucked it well, up. <laughs> never fucked it up. <laughs> You're not even drinking. I know I'm not. But, Kev, what do we always say? Back after this. We here at the Shining Wizards know that you love to do online shopping, and most of you do it through Amazon. 
But don't go to Amazon.com. Go to Amazon.ShiningWizards.com. Click on your country's banner, and when you shop, any money that you spend goes a little bit to support the show. It's not a whole lot, but every little bit helps. And the more you buy, the more we get supported, and the more everybody can be happy, and we can continue to bring you the best professional wrestling podcast. Horns up. This is Rock from Radioactive Metal. Join Snowy, Kareem, Aaron, and myself right here on the Shining Wizards Network every Friday for your weekly metal fix. We talk to all your favorite artists, cover all the latest metal news, cover all the latest releases, and feature brand new unsigned bands. So sit back, grab a beer, download the latest episode, and always remember, it's not metal unless it's radioactive metal. The revolution will be broadcast. Hey everyone, this is Justin, one of your hosts of Inconclusive Breakdown. Join myself, Skeets the Wonder Dome, and my co-host Vince as we bring you an unfiltered anti-PC look at the week in entertainment, sports, music, comic books, video games, and professional wrestling. Also, each week we do a top ten list and answer listener questions. Catch new episodes every Sunday everywhere you get podcasts. Follow us on social media at Inconclusive Pod or Facebook.com slash Inconclusive Breakdown. As always, we are a proud member of the Shining Wizards Network. We're the Jersey Wrecking and we approve this message. Even though many of you believe that we're living in an ununified country where the main question is whether to kneel or stand, you'll never have to worry about the Jersey Wrecking Crew because we're, we're up all night. night. <laughs> <laughs> Too, Too sweet. sweet. No, no, no. It's one sweet. Oh, yeah, that's right. Listen to the Jersey Wrecking Crew on the High Spot Podcast with brand new episodes every Friday on the Shining Wizards and B Plus Player Radio Network. Hey, this is Mike from the Midnight Jury. When you are done with this show, join my co-hosts, Adam, Cal, Sydney, and I, every Friday as we travel back to the last old school generation of the 80s and 90s to review the best and worst in pop culture, horror, and occasionally pro wrestling on WLWstudios.com or the Midnight Jury feeds on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, or Player FM. We'll see... Your recognized symbol of excellence in sports entertainment broadcasting from the current to the way back. Join the impact player Phil Rea and the Portuguese Man of War Choppy for the Turnbuckle Throwbacks Wrestling Podcast. Live every week on RantEMRadio.com. Get all our episodes over at iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Audio Boom, Google Play, ShiningWizardsNetwork.com, and TurnbuckleThrowbacks.com. And we're back! Decca! Oh, we're supposed to play a liner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. I'm going to be unprofessional. I right, hear I'm just gonna lower this. Yeah. Play it, play it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. This is Ian Riccaboni, the voice of Ring of Honor, and you're listening to the Shining Wizards Podcast. Woo! Thank you, Ian. I love you, Enrique Bonnie. And we love our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wizards podcast. You can support us for as little as how much, Kevin? Uh, a dollar? Wow, I can't even talk tonight. I'm just, I don't know if I'm mesmerized or I'm just picking up the idiocy from Matt and I. I am, I am a very good looking man, so it's that I can understand why you're mesmerized. Oh, you are handsome, dude. That's a good point. That's, that's, a not, good a, point. Uh, that's not a false statement, though. You're right. I wish, th- I wish this Hello, soundboard ladies. was a little smoother. That's as smooth fine. as the way you look, actually. That's a good point. Patreon.com slash Wizards Podcast. Come support us just for a dollar. As a matter of fact, if you are in our $5 range, you got the fourth watch along from me. I watched the original Money in the Bank match. Are you the only one that does watch along so, so far? far yes. So far, yeah. All right. Well, you know what it is? I had a little extra time Sunday. And, and you got like, the capacity to do it. I use the I use the H2. You can uh, easily use your iPhone and just sit on the couch and talk into it. Yeah. And then just email me the file and I can take care of that. That'd but speaking of taking care of things, let's take care of our Patreon producers. Woo! Of course, we start with the Queen of the Wizards, Miss Kathy Hummer, Cindy Ardone, Dan and Anthony Russinello, the AOP. AOP, of the SWs, baby! Uh, Ryan Arthur, Manny Kratzo, the, the Dark Helmet, Ryan Arthur, right? Is that him? Yeah, that's him, Dark okay. Helmet. Good, good call, good call. Um, some guy named Matt Garifo. Oh, 
Oh, it's not, he's not related to me at all. But I, I, I don't think so. No, but Matt, thank you so much. Uh, Mike Martinelli and the Shawns, Sean Toe and Sean Coelho. Uh, Kate Hensler, good old Kate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> uh, there's some other guy on here that I noticed since uh, last we spoke. Brett Ciminello. Does that make sense? Do I know him? Brett Ciminello? Kayfabe? Kayfabe, bro? I don't know, bro. Kayfabe, bro. And of course, William Mercier Jr. Lives are gonna be in William Mercier's hands. You know what I mean? If you spend at least $1 a month, you get to have your name mentioned as one of our producers in a silly fashion every week. We gotta come up with some silly ones for everybody else on the list. I try. Like, like Sean Toe is too easy not to have Sean one for. Toe. I could stick my bare feet up, but no, I'm no, so glad they're no, not on camera. No, 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 you no, can't. No, no, no. Also, Pro Wrestling Tees, we have a 20% off sale. Spring into summer, Good people, call. and purchase Fake News Tony's t-shirt. Shining Wizards Kevin Wolfpack NWO themed t-shirt. That's a hot shirt. We're, Your shirt's been moving. We're selling, bro. Matt's shirt's dead in the water, but yours is on fire. We gotta think of another one for Matt. Yeah, that Uncle Creepy was... That was a good idea at the time. Yeah. Well, good thing we didn't it's go It's still with, a great-looking shirt. I'm good, not going to lie to you. Good thing we didn't go with my man Pots and Pans for your shirt. Oh, because, <laughs> remember those Remember those prototypes I was coming up oh with? Oh, my God. We had some bad ones. But ProWrestlingTees.com slash Shining... Backslash uh, no, Shining... Slash Shining Wizards. Slash Shining matter. Wizards. Uh, I think it goes until... Monday? Or Monday? S- yeah. Probably Monday at noon. I 20% don't know. off. Guys, join the pack. Yes. Get some fake news. Yes. Be creepy. Uh, well, go go not. old school with the, the, the classic kick logo or the old school retro WWE theme logo. The queen the queen was here last week. She had a custom purple, purple and, yellow. and gold. That's awesome. Take it to the extreme. Get the ECW theme logo. And between, be a mark. Between you and I, there's a be a mark shirt, by the way, too. Uh, one that's of what ones. I just, that's uh, why I, I, that's I, why I referenced I'm it. I'm an idiot. That's yeah, why. That's okay. Kevin likes the long sleeves. I do. But it's summertime. I recommend the soft shirts. Yeah. Spend a couple extra bucks, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm they very... will keep you from stinking at any convention that you go to because they're not overly heavy and they just fit you so Well, if you wear deodorant, it shouldn't be a problem. That, that, Kevin, that's a problem for a lot of people. You know this. A lot of wrestling. Teams. I saw a sign of, from a woman that was at one of these. <laughs> was it Ace of Base? I saw the sign. It opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. Terrible. Didn't want to hang you up. Now I know why you got into so many fights in college. Yeah, I was a, I was a weirdo. Uh, I wore um, baby blue a lot. Shit, you made me forget my train of thought now. I forgot what I was going to say. It was probably a good idea. Yeah, I'm sure it was. And it was probably a good thing that I let you not remember it. Yeah, probably. Probably. But. Uh, you want to move on? Yeah, I'm going to put you in a bad mood now. Oh. It's time for the Shining Wizards! Ah! Ah! Big extravagant something, whatever! <laughs> ah, yes, great title! Part one! All right, so Kevin and I were talking. We're just going to do part one now because we do want to cover Money in the Bank, and we figured it'd be apropos to go through our picks for Money in the Bank as we cover the pay-per-view. You Matt like screwed it up in his email. Yeah, Matt did screw it up, but you screwed it up at the pay-per-view. Oh, actually. boy, oh, boy, did I! Kevin ate his... Fat nuts. <laughs> Guys, I still got I still got shampoo running down my neck because I took a bath Woo-hoo. in this so, pay-per-view picks. It turns out Matt was the big winner on the day. Matt went seven and three. Um, I don't have all the results, but he, he this is who Matt took. We can go over it again. Yeah. I Matt got had it. Tony Nese, Rey Mysterio, Kofi Kingston, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. Those seem to be the easy picks. Shane. No, wait, Matt didn't have Mysterio. Matt didn't have Mysterio? Yes, he did, because he, yeah. switched, he yeah, switched. I switched him. Yeah, yeah he switched. Yeah. Okay, you switched I'm him. professional. Yeah. All right. Well. And Matt also picked Bailey for the winner of the women's money in the bank. Solid pick. That's a hell of a pick. Solid pick. He missed the men's money in the bank, which we all did. Uh, and he took Becky Lynch twice. Wait, <gasps> no, he took. He didn't take Becky no. Lynch twice. He took Charlotte, and he took Becky Lynch over. See, because he wrote No, Lynch. he did take Becky Lynch twice. No, he didn't. He put Lynch Lynch. He's wrong. Oh, no, yeah. That's right, because Charlotte beat Becky. That's yeah, right. he took Lynch over Lacey over, Evans over Charlotte. He took Lynch over. He had to take Lynch he took over Lacey Evans over Lynch, and then Lynch over Charlotte. That's what both of you guys did. Correct. Yes. So that's why he's got Lynch Lynch. He's an idiot because he wrote Be- Be- Becky Becky for you too. Ah, oh, this guy. Um, I went six. Wait, and Matt four. wrote for Bono. 
don't kill me. I'm trying. Ah. To get, I'm really trying to get through this. Ah. No, don't, ah. don't. Don't encourage him, people. Ah. Don't, don't, don't. Love you. Um. So I went six and four. I had Nice, Mysterio, Kofi, Reigns, Rollins. I took Lacey, which I no. I took. Yeah, I took Lacey. No, I took Lynch, which I won over Lacey. And then I took Becky over Charlotte because I had I picked Lynch twice. Wait a second. Win. My match doesn't have I mean I, I I lost, but mine doesn't have Joe on it. Yeah, it does. It has Joe. Oh yeah, it does at the end. Wow. Right. All right. So Kevin went four and six. Oof, took a bath, boys. The only ones Kevin got right were Reigns, Rollins, Kofi, and Tony Nice was a was a wild card. But yeah, Kevin Kevin got all the solid ones. Yeah, dude, I see Money in the Bank is one of my favorite pay per views only because you would think ideally that they would elevate somebody. Am I right or am I? Am well, I, they elevated somebody. Well, ba- Bailey, but oh, Brock. Ba- but I mean, Bailey was a nice surprise. Bailey, <sighs> I was really hoping it was going to be Dana Brooke, and for a while, I really thought she was going to pull it out. I really wanted Ember. I, I feel like Ember Moon. They haven't. They haven't completely wasted yet, and they still have a lot left in the tank. And this could have done it. Same thing with Andrade. Like that's why I like they sometimes. I mean, you've had your Randy Orton's, you've had your Edges, you've had the guys that have already been established, John Cena, who have won the match, and you know did their thing. But then you've also had the ones that don't work out, like your Baron Corbin's, your Damian Sandow's. Say what you want about Jack Swagger, he cashed in and won the World Heavyweight Championship. But I don't think that was a successful money in the bank. This is you hope that they give a wild like the Miz is the perfect example. Well, the, is it's the per, I'm sorry about, I know talk about Miz. I know I'm a Miz guy, but that's the perfect example of what can be done with a money in the bank winner. Jeff Hardy, I th- no, uh, Jeff Hardy wasn't a money in the bank winner. But anyway, I digress. So I always look for them to pick somebody. That you don't expect, but you know well, has the potential to be a main event. I mean, that's why I took Claymore, because I really felt like this would have been a great opportunity to elevate him. See, I didn't, because he's already there to me, or to the eyes of everyone else. Not so much me, but in the eyes of everyone else, he's already kind of on that level. Worked Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. So, to me, he's there. So, would, would I have been upset if he won? Absolutely not. Would I've been upset if Baron Corbin won? One hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> well, the, the rumor, the rumor going around was that before the whole Brock Lesnar thing went down, Ali, it was going to be Ali or Claymore. They were they were split either way to go. I don't know if I would have been crazy about Ali. Ali, winning. I agree with you. I don't know if he's at that point yet. He see that he is a victim of circumstance. I'm a my, victim of circumstance, in my opinion, because he got hurt. Kofi took over. Yeah, did that. So he lost a little steam, in my opinion. And and that's no disrespect whatsoever because I think he's amazing. But I don't think he'll be able to get up back to where he was yet. Yeah. I think it'll take time. I think he, I think he can do it. And it's all about the people bo- behind him that support him to get him there. Yeah. So, I mean, he had a great showing. And as far as I know from what I've read... He had no idea Brock Lesnar. No one had any idea Brock Lesnar was coming out to win that match. Yeah, they they had a still of like Randy Orton sitting at ringside, and like it was some caption like eight guys busted their ass. Just kind of shady to me, to be honest with you. What? How do you not like? I I, I don't want to break down the fourth wall for wrestling. But... It's easy. The referees told him don't get in. The referees told him just stay where you are. That's 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 how that goes. Oh, that's what it was. It has to be. They have to get some sort of signal at that point saying, like, yeah, don't, don't take get the, up. Don't take the briefcase. Don't. Well, well, no, like just Ali don't... was probably tipped off before the match. I would imagine like... that they would have had to been told something. But that's easy. I for... don't know. There's like three, four refs out there for the for the money yeah. in the bank, isn't there? They had a bad night, too, those refs. No. Yeah. Ray, I heard Ray and, and um, Joe got cut off because Joe's nose was broken. It looked like it was his eye. Yeah, I don't know. He but, was fucked. Uh, it was. It was just weird. It was, and the fucking lucha with the fucking. I didn't know that. I'm was that even? Did, so did we even? Was that a match that was scheduled? Or no, that, it wasn't. Did that and, just and it never. It never happened. Like they were supposed to. Ru- I don't know who they were supposed to wrestle. Like who were they? Who were they booked against? I don't know. You know what else is Hawkins weird? and Ryder, maybe. You know what else is weird? The Usos wrestled. On, Daniel Bryan and Rowan, and they won. Who did? Who the Usos? They're the tie champs? No. Oh. It was a non-title match. But that's fucking weird. 
even even somebody as big as Daniel Bryan is cursed by holding tag belts because the tag champs always job. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and there's it's to me it's ridiculous that Daniel Bryan's on a pre-show of any pay-per-view. No, of course, of course. Um, I like the way all the women's stuff went down. Uh, some of the slopperino. Oof. But, I uh, loved. I, I hated that. I think Lacey should have won this match. No. But no, no, I, I 100% do, but I don't hate the way that they followed up with her being a badass still and still bringing the pain to Becky Lynch. Yeah, so I, it's salvaged. It did, and they're going to have some sort of, you know, feud going on from there, but it was I didn't like the fact that they put both belts on Becky. I do like the fact that Charlotte has something to do now with Bailey. That whole Bailey winning yeah. the money in the bank, the way she stormed up the ladder after um, what's her name was carrying Mandy Rose up to the top. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. And then, dude, the look she gave her, she's like, "No, this is my night," and just wrecked him. And wrecked him. D- damn near damn killed. killed him. Oh. All but right. But then Bailey, like when she Hack came, jokes when she came to the ring and she was conflicted about cashing it in, and then she just shrugged and she just handed it off. I was like, "Wait, let me ask you this though." What happened to Charlotte that she was completely knocked out? Did I miss something? If you did, then I did too, because I don't remember it. Because she went into the corner at that point, and then she was down, and that's when. Bailey oh no! Cashed. You know what happened? Uh, she went for a spear, and she hit the- and and Becky moved or something, and she they played it off like she hit her head on like the post or something oh, like that. Oh, she. I don't got- think she really did. Who was Goldberg wrestling that time when he head butted the post? Remember he did that. Bret Hart. Maybe he was knocked silly against somebody when they pulled him out of the corner. Oh no! Wait, that was that was Goldberg knocking Bret Hart out. Never mind. Oh, boo! Yeah, fuck you, Goldberg. Wow! Whoa! Hot take. Ruined the career. Ended the career of my favorite wrestler of all time. I can get a fuck you, Goldberg, if I want to. Tony uh, Nese and Davari had a good match. I love you, Goldberg. Oh, stop it. No. Stop it. I do. Roman love Reigns, dude, they ruined Elias. Elias is dead in the Dunzo world. Magunzo. It's ridiculous because he was over in England last week. <laughs> Oh, well, but was he? But was he long. over in England? Well, he's done. Doesn't matter how. Well. No, see, he missed it again. What? He said he was over in England, meaning oh. that he was there in England. Oh. I asked, was he over in England? All right, I get it now. My man. You know what I don't get? Pans. Shane McMahon winning against the Miz. I'll tell you why I don't hate this. I hate it. I'll tell I you why I don't it. because I'm gonna make a comparison that's gonna blow your mind and you're gonna hate it. You're going to say Zack Ryder? Nope. Oh, really? Nope. Who's this? This storyline has been the most drawn out, progressive one that I've seen that I can remember since the fucking Mega Powers exploding. It, they've done match after match, and we're going to have another match. This could go till SummerSlam, and it's our first time seeing in a long time that I can remember. I could be a dummy, and, uh, and not remember other ones, but we're going to see this story continue because the Miz at some point has to get his win, right? Yeah, but look, Am I, I mean, look, I could Steve, be wrong. Steve Austin was supposed to get his win over Triple H, too, and we all learned it. We all saw how that turned out. Wait, what? What are you talking you about? You don't remember that? The best of the, the Hellfire, the, they had the three stages of Hell match that was supposed to be the blow off to their feud. And the two of them got knocked out, and Triple H wound up pinning Austin because he fell on top of him. I would, that's different. Uh, because Triple H is like God. Yeah, I mean Triple H was <laughs> I don't remember when I don't remember the context of where they were in their careers for this match. Were they both already made? Was, oh yeah. But, oh yeah. But Triple H they may have been knowing that Triple H had more to offer in the long run. Yeah. Uh, I I didn't like the finish. I thought it was I thought it, it was a clever finish, I'll give him credit. Yeah. But Shane nah, Shane should have lo- that's Shane been done. should have you know lost him. But now Shane is gonna be wrestling Roman Reigns in Saudi Arabia. In a couple of in next no. two weeks. No, no. You didn't see this on. No. Road? All right. Sorry, I'm sorry, Margie. Sorry. You idiots. I didn't see this, uh, but I'm, that that's how furious that makes because me. Because he came out and he challenged oh. Roman Reigns. You remember this on Raw? Last... Reigns challenged him. He said he had nothing else to do. Oh now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he said he was going to announce it tonight or some nonsense tonight. Uh, what Gross. Else? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Kofi's match with um, Owens. A lot of fun. It, it was fun, but it was a foregone conclusion. Like, at no point did I ever feel that Owens was going to win. However. Which is good. Well, it, it, that's tough in this situation because but new champ. But AJ Styles and, and Seth. Match of the year. You actually felt like AJ might pull it out. I agree. And that was the big difference between the two matches. 100% agree. Okay. Right, and, sure. uh, yeah, I, I 
Yeah, you're right. There are definitely times where I thought AJ was actually going to win, which going in I never thought was a possibility. But when that when you're actually watching the match, God, that the that finish the. I, there's so many spots in that matchup which is so crisp and so good. Yep. That, that had the potential to not be crisp and not be good. Yeah. And they were fantastic. Even even early on with the uh, with the uh, falsy, when AJ was down on his knees and, and, yeah. and he went for the stomp, but he didn't get it, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That went into the Styles Clash, didn't it? Didn't he catch him in the air? Yeah. That, I think that was towards the end, though. Didn't? That was coming toward the end. But yeah. He finished with the stomp. But the first time he went for the stomp, AJ got up and caught him in the Styles Clash when he lifted which was, his leg up. Incredible, In- insane. That to me, right now, I mean, I, I might have to go back and watch some stuff. Well, that's match of the year so far for me. And AJ has the privilege now of working with Baron Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't hate. So we got sh- wait, we got Shane. I don't and... hate Baron Corbin, but I just hate his. We got Shane gear. and Roman Reigns, and we got Baron Corbin and AJ. Ugh. At at uh, Super Showdown. Uh, I don't know. We'll get to Super Showdown. That's in a fine minute. for what I mean. If that's for if those are the matches for that, that's fine. So what do you give the pay per view? La, 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 la. Ooh, this is a tough one because normally. Well, I'm, what do you I'm, think of the finish? First of all, the end of the pay per view with Brock. Uh, well, do you like do you like duty? I love duty. You love duty. I make duty. I take duty. Uh, the the finish was duty. So if you like talking about duty, if you like watching duty, if you like Brock Lesnar taking a big duty on the end of a fantastic ladder match. And Jericho trolled the shit out of him, too. It was duty. Go, Brock, go. <laughs> it was pure poop. I The match was great up to that point. The match was fantastic. I hate this fact that, oh, and then and then Heyman just writes it off like, oh, we worked a, we worked a deal out backstage while the match was going on or while the show was going on. Tony, it's called poopy. It's so dumb. It's called duty. It's so dumb. And I, I hate to do this. I hate to be negative. I hate to shit. No, no pun, shit no pun on intended. It. But it was just, you have a chance to brighten your future by making an Andrade, making an Ali, making a freaking, I don't, a Drew McIntyre. I don't give a fuck who you choose. This was just not the way to go. Brock Lesnar will always be over. I get it. The thought of having Brock threaten the champion at any time whatever that is what it is if that's your cup of tea that's your cup of tea but it's fuck oh, it's dumb it's, it's so yeah. dumb brock should have gone away for six months it would have been so much better just to have him go away he's back a month after mania what's the point at least ronda rousey has the sense to go have a family and go away for a while were you surprised that uh, that kofi kingston didn't get the reaction that he he's been getting on on, on tv what do you mean uh, at the paper? His view? entrance. It looked, I think it sounded like there was no pop at all for him. It's kind of hard for the WWE champion to be coming out to the pancake music. Yeah, if he I w- think if he would have came out to like y- SOS, you know. Yes, I love I, that song I thought, too, man. I thought that the exact same time. I'm like, because it also it didn't have the Biggie intro. It didn't have the oh. It didn't have that either. Yeah. So just to come out to it's a new day. Yes, it is. And it, it's and then the beat. There's no volume. It's just beat. Ba-dum, so like, it, I, I think that took away from it, which, and he, and which is actually sad because that means that WWE pops are based on entrances. But he's but he's like he's the WWE champion. Like he shouldn't be throwing pancakes. I don't know. Maybe it's me. No, I'm with you. Supposedly Big E was returning tonight too. So I wonder how that's going to play into it. Maybe I'll get that pop. Did you expect? Did you think that you were going to see Xavier turn on Kofi when he came out? When for at the, the at the end of the match, no, he came back. Oh, okay, I thought you, you as a wrestling fan, you always think that there's gonna. It be might that. happen tonight. Who knows? Yeah. Might happen on SmackDown tonight. But now, but but Kofi's maybe. I guess the whole thing with uh, Kevin Owens is over. Who knows? Nah, I, can't, I mean, who else is he gonna feud with? Maybe Big E. Biggie, 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 can't yeah, you see? You know, of course, I can't find SOS on my soundboard. Now I'm disappointed. Okay. I'm very disappointed. So the standings right now, but let's wrap it up, put a bow on it. Yeah. I'm in the lead at 56 and 25. You are in second place, two behind at 54 and 27. And Matt with his big seven and three is closing the gap. He's 53 and 28. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Well, I'm not worried yet. But we do have another pay per view to cover. Oh boy. Well, all right, listen. How about we do this? Let's is there anything else we want to cover from Monday Night Raw? Oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff from Monday Night Raw we should cover. I'm listening. Um, well, Mick Foley. 
We love uh, we, uh, I want to start with this. We, uh, that's fine. That's we fine. love Mick Foley. Love him. It was teased during Money in the Bank that Mick Foley was bringing out a new championship last night. That's right. On Raw. Yep. So they opened 10 o'clock with Mick. Great. Mick, uh, I think Mick lost a couple more teeth because he was like, th- 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 like seashell, seashells kind of. By talking, the seashore. Which doesn't make sense, but work with me. What, she sells seashells by this? this you seashore? sound just like Mick Foley did last night. Well, it's a tongue twister. That's so a- Mick Foley, and first of all, he brings out the belt, and it, half of the belt's hanging out uh, yeah, of the bag Yeah, that already. bothered me, but that's just I was like, it wasn't we're- enough to, sh- to show what it was. They should have put it, they should have had it on, like, you know, remember how they, sometimes they would use the, the table? The table yeah. or, like, a platform. Nah, but, it felt, and, like, but it was kind of cool because everybody's like, what's in the bag, what's in the bag, yeah, you know? He's you, just kind of holding on to it. Okay, it was... let me start with this. Mick Foley is giving the history of a championship that was defended 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That, that 300,000 people held. Personally, I always liked that gimmick. I liked it. But I liked it better when it was the Hardcore Championship, which Mick Foley did not say the word hardcore even once nope. in describing the history of, of this type of championship. Okay. So he display he shows the belt, and the belt is called the 24-7 Championship. <sighs> that is the, it's the shittiest name I ever heard. There's no prestige in that whatsoever. It, it looks like a belt that Little Mac would have in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out without yeah. an awful 24-7 in the middle, which is not a bad design in and of itself because that's the WBC uh, Boxing Championship design. The green strap with the, uh, you know, with the three. You that mean know. that means absolutely nothing to me. Really? I know boxing. Don't get me wrong. You don't know the three major belts. No, I do. Used to be? I do. I one hundred percent. It's the green do. belt. But it's the I one get that actually it. looks like a championship I, belt. I know, Tony. Okay. So but you know. to me, you don't have to. If that was their inspiration to make this belt, that's a poor job by them. No, the belt. The belt. If it had a better design for the center plate, would be per would would have been better. Yeah. I like the strap. It's a perfect old school wrestling belt design. It's not it's not the shield looking design with a big W on it, but it might as well have had that. It would have been a better design because it's got a 24 with a slash and a seven. So it makes no sense. Oh, I hold the title. Yeah, the, the 24-7 title. Like, does that mean you're up all night? Oh boy. But it makes it can't like I agree. Like it can't be the 24-7 title yeah. if you only hold it for 30 seconds. It means the title is defended. F- 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I get that. But then he also mentioned it's only going to be defended on the third hour of the show, which makes absolutely no they sense. They said that? Yeah, Mick Foley did say something about the third hour of the shows, but I think they maybe walked it back because it's going to be a belt that could be defended anywhere, anytime, which includes all the brands. He mentioned all the brands. Yeah, he by did name. mention he mentioned 205 Live, NXT, uh, SmackDown. Can you can you rattle off some of the bigger named hardcore champions? Oh, 100%. Me? I mean, I mean, twenty four seven rule hardcore yeah. champion. Crash Holly. Okay. Uh, Stevie Richards, Just Incredible, Tommy Dreamer, Raven, uh, fucking Patterson and Briscoe. Maven. Maven. Pa- Patterson Briscoe. Uh, did um did Bradshaw hold it under twenty four seven rules? He made it. He made it uh, the Texas Hardcore Championship. Okay, so there you go. So he may not. Whether or not that was a twenty four seven rule, okay. I don't know. But fucking uh, even like Jacqueline, I think had it in like. Uh, what's her name? Bobby Brown had it. Uh, what the hell is her name? Bambi? Some one of the hoes had it. But oh, it was Vic- all goofy. It was Victoria who had it. No, but no. No, when she was a hoe. Wait, that was her? Pretty sure. Oh, come on, you got to be wrong on that. Well, no, I'm pretty sure Victoria as a hoe had it. Victoria, Victoria was a hoe. As a hoe. Oh, you know, I know she, she wa- was. You know who else was a hoe? Mick Foley's wife was a hoe. No. Yes, yeah, she was. Read his books. I forget which book it was in, but oh, yep. Oh, boy. Yep. So, anyway. Who came out to the ring on, on Raw last night? Wait, to quote the abominable CPA, a veritable who's that of the locker room. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I mean, listen, it gives these guys something to do, like the Titus O'Neil, the Carl Anderson, the Luke Gallows, that don't really have anything to do. <laughs> Which I do love. I love Titus O'Neil. All right, let me ask you this. Do you know who the current 24-7 champion is nope. as of this? Uh, no, it's it's. There R-Truth. were three champions last it's night. It's our truth. I had no idea our truth won it. I must have missed it. I must have missed. I know it Bobby too. Roode won it on the way back to the locker room, and then he lost the belt into the crowd. They had to go out and get it. Listen, it'll probably make for some fun stuff. It was terrible. But- it was a terrible way to introduce it. It's a yeah. terrible design. It's a terrible like look. Everything about that last night was terrible. 
But I love the concept of the 24-7 rule. They could have named it anything else. It's yeah, I agree. And it's just it's gonna make for some fun segments, but probably. They could've named but that's it, it. They could have named they could have named It's not gonna it. elevate anybody. It's a it's good it's it's for, a goofy prop to it's have a fun goofy with. prop to have fun with the guys that don't get on TV. So I don't have a problem with it at all. Everything about last night I had a huge problem with. The the concept in and of itself, I, I like it. I, I always have liked that rule. But all right. oh, listen, I'm not gonna disagree with you. That's me. I don't know. Anything else on Raw? Oh yeah. So Shane's gonna wrestle what's his nuts at uh in Saudi Arabia, Roman Reigns. Um AJ's getting into a few with Baron Corbin. The ladies had a six man match. Was it the Riot Squad? The, oh, it was Lacey the, Evans and the, the ladies Iconics. had a six man match? So they had a six ladies match. Oh, okay, there you go. I'm sorry. It's six man. It doesn't matter. We're I know. I'm just we're all with men. You. I'm fucking with you. Mankind. No. Oh. Uh yeah, so Alexa Bliss had to stand in the corner. Nice touch, by the way. She came to the ring holding her coffee mug because she knew she wasn't going to wrestle. That was pretty cool. That's nice. She's awesome. She's still the best. She's, uh, she'll she'll have a career for life. Nikki Cross teaming up with Becky Lynch. That's a cool team. Um, yeah. It's a shame Alexa keeps getting concussed. Yeah. Because they need somebody like Alexa Bliss. That yeah. Lacey Evans is. Mm. She's a superstar. No, Lacey Evans is a freaking is a star. She's terrible. I How hate do you it. I don't I hope, understand. Listen, I, I hope the people Bukaki have different have I a hope difference the Bukaki of opinions. Bukaki Warriors come out and beat the shit out of them. Who the Bukaki, the Bukaki Warriors? Warriors? Oh God, you're gross. You didn't see that picture I sent you guys? Somebody crossed. No, them. I did. And they I, spelled, I just cho- I just chose not to look at it. <laughs> they spelled Bukaki with the same letters as Kabuki, and then someone corrected them, and they're like, "Asshole, it's a fucking meme. Take it easy." <laughs> the Bukaki Warriors. Well, gross. It is what it is. Lacey yeah. Evans is a is a star. Uh, I don't like. What like, did I say? Like I said, I, I understand jur- if you the, don't agree with something. The jury's still I, out on that one. But how we disagree so much on something that I think is so great yeah. is is beyond me. Anything else happen on Raw? Anything uh, else that we need to mention? If there is, then we don't have to talk about I it. I really didn't because we have a lot to we have a lot to get to. I think I mean Sami Zayn and and Braun Strowman and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brock Lesnar came back. And they did the flippy do fucking wild card nonsense shit. Was it going to cash in? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the opening was good with Brock, but I don't, just don't give a shit. He's, mo- all- he's a lot more animated, Brock. You see him doing, like, he had the briefcase, like, he was, like, a 1980s, like, uh, break dancer in, Bro- in, in, say, like, in uh, Brooklyn. Like, like uh, <laughs> what's his name? Fuck. I can't think of Buck Zumhoff. Oh, boy. Hey, we got to bring up Buck Zumhoff. <laughs> oh, boy. Um. But well, you know what I'm saying? He's so he no, was like I, I, he was doing like the I understand. I I was, the, it's not the moonwalk, but it was a d- different kind like, of walk like that they bo- called like, it. Yeah, whatever. Back in the early nineties. The only time Brock should be dancing is with the mariachi band. That was still his greatest dancing moment ever. That was pretty funny. Um so what what did I want to get into? Uh oh yeah. So Matt did a show last week with uh Gino Gotts and uh Geza Gadal. Did he mention the action figure score that we picked up by any chance on that show? I, I haven't listened yet. Don't rem- see. He's gonna kill me because there was another thing I didn't remember earlier too. Um, because we I had a fucking to it. great haul. All right, yes. All right, give it two minutes. Tell right. the story in case Matt didn't tell it. So Matt, I'm sorry if you told this already. It doesn't matter. Just yeah. You, you're- we we ha- we had this guy out of Belleville, New Jersey. Belleville <laughs> had this huge the home of vicious Vin. Huge action figure collection that my buddy uh, from the tattoo garage, Chris, also located in Belleville. Uh, turned me on to. He offered thirty five dollars for the entire thing, which was ridiculously low. But yeah, but but it wasn't I'm, even all the pictures at that point. It was just like one it, or two it, pictures, yeah. wasn't it? Correct. So I wasn't gonna upsell the guy. I'm not gonna be like. Uh, I'm not gonna tell him like, hey, you're selling this way too low. Um, I'm but, gonna take advantage of a deal. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> I would have probably given him more if he if he accepted the the, the, the thirty five. I probably would have given him fifty, right? Um, but. He his nephew tipped him off that you could get a lot more for this, so he's like somebody offered me seventy bucks. I'm like, would seventy five buy it? And at this point, Matt is in with me for halves, so he's like, yes, yeah, seventy five would buy it. We get there, uh, guys. No, 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 no. What time was this all conspiring or transpiring? Oh, around 
6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. No, what time did you guys actually go to Oh, around guy? 10 o'clock at night? This is this is what I mean. Like, And, and this yeah. is like covert operations. I'm laying in bed. I put my kid to sleep. I'm trying to relax. And I got these two idiots back and forth. Yo, I'm going to pick you up. Yo, I'm going to meet you here. Yo, we're getting in the car. Bro. Yo, we're pulling this shit off. Yo, I'm, gonna I'm like, it's 10 o'clock. Leave I'm, me alone. I'm going to Vince Russo bro you right now. <laughs> bro. <laughs> this score was sick. Yeah, it's a sick score. Um... And so we, he, I'm like, would 75 buy it? He's like, yes, me and Matt go. Matt gets, I give him, I give him 80, right? Just to oh, try to be nice. I give him 80. Whitey, yeah? Nah, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Like, it's so, it's two figures in that collection are worth more than what I paid for it. Yeah. So it's, uh, but we're I, talking. Again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to spend more than he's but what, offering. But what are we talking? We're talking Hasbro's. We're Hasbro's, talking LJN's. LJN's, Remco's, like. Oh, so you had like AWA guys in there too? Oh, at at, uh, Road Warriors. Any rings? Anything? No. But he said he has them somewhere. So he's going to get back to me. Oh, you got to get the hookup on that. And there's a, which, here's the most, there's the Elizabeth gold skirt in there, but there's no Elizabeth, which makes me think that he still has Elizabeth somewhere. She's like, she Macho Man, they're locked up. Yeah. (laughs) They were like Vice Land. Macho Man wouldn't let her out. But take the skirt because I'm not done with her yet, brother. Randy. Help me, Randy. But, dude, Matt got, Matt's Hall got a Bam Bam Bigelow Hasbro, the Natural Disasters in great condition, uh, Dusty Rhodes. Unbel- I got my LJNs. I got the blue shirt referee, Billy Jack Haynes with hat, slick with hat, Jimmy Hart with the hearts on the megaphone. Dude, I'm I'm geeking out right now. I know you are. That's why I, I got came in. Freddie Blassie with the cane. Um, Coco Beware with Frankie. Wait, did you have a Kamala in there? No. Oh, I was going to say, I thought what, I saw... I had a one-man gang. That's big. Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Ludwig Borga? DiBiase. No, no no blue cards. I mean, no green cards, which was upsetting, but... Ted DiBiase. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too far away from the board. I'm enjoying this too much. I got a... Oh, oh my God. Like, just... Um, the, some... Some uh, some LJNs that I, that I didn't have, or that I... Or upgraded now. Uh, British Bulldogs... Galoobs, WCW Galoobs, Sting, Luger, Sting. Pillman. I thought you guys were going to bring some innocent. shitty ones to decorate the studio. There are no shitty ones. Wow, really? Well, I mean, there are, but there's there's ones that I don't... If there are shitty ones, they're ones that I don't have, so I'm still going to keep them and maybe try to sell them to get other other things. Gotcha. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I got, no, so, no, I got ma- so many double of the Hasbros where I can potentially flip them and afford to buy, like... Maybe a new car <laughs> or like a, R- no, much, no, no, huh? no, 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 it was a joke. Well, hey, you never know. But to to flip and get maybe like a, a, a green card one, two, three kid or a green card smoking guns. So I could easily flip a lot of my doubles to get that because he's got some of the ones that I have go for like 30, 40 bucks. Yeah, easily. Pretty, but that that's so crazy that you got. And But like like thieves in the night. <laughs> that's what was so funny it's, about it. I, it, it. You're right. But Matt was smart about it because. He had already reneged on his deal once, which, again, I don't blame him. The deal was insanely low. Yeah, well, you got to lock that shit down then. So then Matt was like, I'm like, Matt, we got these for 75 He's like, we'll pick them up tonight. I'm like, done. I, I didn't even think about it. I was like going to pick him up the next day at work. But Matt, Matt made a score. Matt got like a demolition crush, which he didn't have. A demolition. Too big for britches. Yeah. So... Um, all right, we're gonna fly through this. Yeah, let's 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 first talk. of all. Uh, Matt talked briefly about Ashley Massaro. Yeah, we found out she passed away while he was doing his show last week on uh Thursday. Yeah, uh, 39 years old. Yeah, talk is it was suicide. Yep, it hasn't been uh, you know released anywhere, but that seems to be the rumblings going on. No, around. I'm pretty sure it, it has was been released. Uh, TMZ reported today that she committed suicide by hanging. Really, yeah, see that I did not know. Yeah. So it's, she's been through some shit. Did you read? Did you read uh, the the affidavit that she filed about potentially being what allegedly f- being raped? I, I, again, I say allegedly not because I don't believe her. I'm just saying because it was never brought to a court. So that's why you have to say. And allegedly. she brought it. I mean, according to the affidavit, she brought it to McMahon's attention, and they pretty much said, "Don't hey, do this. It's gonna fuck everything up for us." Which has been shared a lot by the likes of David Starr and Danny Cage and all these guys. Which, if this story is true, 
It's deplorable. And you know what? It's out there. We don't want to get into all the gory yeah, details yeah, about yeah. it, but it's it's heinous. It's horrendous. It's something absolutely like this ridiculous. And what makes it more disappointing and upsetting is the fact that it could potentially have been done by our own military, who we all love and support to no end. The fact that it could have been done under their watch is absolutely disgusting. And I'm that's I mean that's as far as I'll say about it. But as far as Ashley Massaro, the person, I've had very few and brief encounters with her. Uh, with Russell Pro, where he may have been PWS at the time. Absolutely the most pleasant person, the nicest person you could have ever wanted to be around. I played her out to the ring a couple times. I think once with the lifeguard, Mike Dell. Um, I, I wonder if she had any of these problems before this incident happened. I don't know. That's the weird thing about it. You know? She's... She's saying that she was involved in that lawsuit against. Yeah, the, and the she was also she was also on her way for a comeback. Yeah, you know. Yep. And she's had uh, you know a presence online. She's been great. Yeah. Her her last tweet was her responding to three hundred or or four hundred fans fan mail. Yeah. So she was very in touch with her fans. She was very in touch with people around her. Again, one of the sweetest people you could ever possibly like she wouldn't know me from adam don't get me wrong i'm not trying to name drop here but i just remember her presence at the shows was so pleasant so nice so great um truly loved being where she was at the time and it it just sucks it absolutely sucks yeah 2005 diva search winner yep she was on survivor super charismatic oh yeah super Energetic. They used to call her Spunky, right? Didn't they say like, "Oh, here comes"? Oh, I don't remember that, but she had, she had that like punk rock look. Yeah, she always used to like jump around a lot. Yeah, and, when like, the hands and it wasn't quite there. It, punk rock has obviously been around forever, but she had that look and was one of the first ones, to my recollection. Yeah, like backward uh, baseball cap, fishnets, yeah. all that look. Yeah, I remember. She was a cutie. Like Shannon Moore did eventually. Like all these guys, like maybe even Shannon she, Moore stealing gimmicks. She was, well, he was the Prince of Bunk. But the uh, prince of bunk. I, you're the prince of bunk. I am the bunkhouse buck. I'm I'm fake news Tony, and you're the prince of bunk. That's a shirt. <laughs> of course it is. Uh, Hopefully available soon at prowrestlingtees.com. Rest in peace, Ashley. This yes, is, it's sad. It's, it's just, rough. Any way you slice it, it's so sad. Hitch she has a young daughter. Absolutely brutal. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. All right, but we don't, we don't want to. As as much as as important as a story as that is, and we're not trying to diminish it, but. We got to move on and get to get to fun time. Fun time, Tony. Saudi Arabia, Friday, June seventh, two p.m. <laughs> and then we go to Saudi Arabia. Well, I, I, I gotta get it. I gotta get it out there. What, I, what would you recommend that we go? With? No, it's Saudi Arabia is fine. I just wish I didn't use that fun time transition to go to a a country that's absolutely. <laughs> so this is the card so far. We all know that Goldberg has uh, taken on the Undertaker. Uh, we've got Roman Reigns versus Shane McMahon. We've got Triple H versus Randy Orton. Braun Strowman's taking on Bobby Lashley, by the way. Filler. Uh, Finn Balor, as the demon, is taking on Andrade, defending the IC belt. All right. And a 50-man battle royal. Not, Not a royal, royal rumble. rumble. Yep. A battle royal. I wish I love royal rumbles. I love battle royals, but I wish it would have been another royal rumble. They hyped it by saying the show will be as good or better than WrestleMania. WrestleMania These are was... all throwaway shows, dude. I don't care. Look, no, I, I, I've said it a million times. They're going to Saudi Arabia. They're getting the money. They're throwaway shows. It, it doesn't. They might. It doesn't mean they won't be fun to watch. Eh. Did you watch MLW this week? I did. Get rid of this fucking nonsense. Uh, okay, so MLW TV this week, whatever they call their what do they call their fusion show? fusion. That's it. Thank you. From New York. So we got Mance Warner and Sammy Callahan against El Hijo de la Park and Ricky Martinez with. Uh, O Ocasio Cortez at ringside. Ocasio. Yes. Right. Um, great match. I thought it was a lot of fun. Mance and Sammy work well together. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic that. Well, they're both like kind of. Yeah, you know, I get it. Scumbag. Just based, you know. But but based on Sammy Callahan's like OVE character, it doesn't seem like he would be partnered with this guy. But it works. That's the other weird thing. You see a lot of these guys crisscross applesauce on these shows. Yeah. You know, it's like. Yeah, I don't know, but it worked. I enjoyed the match. It was fun. Uh, Minoru Tanaka defeated Daga. Great match. Fun match. Great seeing Tanaka. Yeah. 
when they when they were first saying Tanaka, I was thinking Masato. I was like, holy shit, he's in MLW now. But no, different. Oh Tanaka. god, I wish Masato Tanaka was regularly wrestling here. Him, he's him, been around, but him and Mike Awesome. That was that was that's a very underrated ECW feud. You don't. I think I think it gets the, the respect it deserves. I mean, you get Tommy and Raven. You get Jerry Lynn and uh, Rob Van Dam. I think that's kind of the one that doesn't really get the play that well, it should. Well, I'll tell you why, because ECW was probably in a different place yeah. than it was. But I still think for where they were, Masato Tanaka and Mike Awesome ranks even, up even there. the match at um, One Night Stand. Brilliant. Fucking amazing. When he took the power bomb over uh, the top. You know what? I'm going to have to go watch that match again. <laughs> Definitely. That, you know what? Get your recorder out. Do watch a, watch, do a, watch do a twisted T watch along. That would be awesome. I'm in. We all got to get together for a watch along too. Yeah. I know we're long overdue. Thank but, you, Patreon supporters. But people, the Patreon, the patrons have been enjoying my solo. Dude, act. my brother does it, bro. That's insane. I know. Wait, who? I'm sorry, kayfabe. Who is who? Matty Garf. Oh, I thought you were gonna say your brother was Brett. Brett Chim- hey. Chimolino. J George. We... <laughs> J George. I saw him recently during uh, WrestleMania week. Well, everybody was around WrestleMania yeah. week. He's killing it too. Love J. George. Um, Brian Pillman Jr. defeated Rich Swan. So now the, he uh, will face uh, Alexander Hammerstone. Oh, I thought you were gonna say fucking Mr. Touchdown. <laughs> Hammerstone closed the show with a great interview. By nice the way, little promo ski. I, and I don't like this whole Rich Swan thing with Myron Reed. Myron Reed cheating the whole time. I don't like All right, that shit. all right, that's fair. And Brian, Pil- Brian Pillman. I thought the Heart Foundation was a heel faction. Am I wrong? Are they? Are no, they, they were babyface because they just feuded with. The dynasty, really? Which is MJF? Yeah, well, he's a dick anyway. Who was he shit? He was shitting on the Von Erics. Yeah, so they're lining that one up. Goddamn MJF Woo. is fucking. God, for, I'm. I know I'm gonna be a homer again for this, oh, but here the, we go. I, no, I'm sorry, but MJ is MJF not good? No, he's awesome. I told him two years ago when I when I called one of his matches in Tier One. I'm like, dude. I'm like, you're gonna be. I'm like, you're gonna be huge. He's like, he, thank you. The, as fast as he developed under the tutelage of obviously. Yeah, no, like who, I don't who want who he was. I don't want people thinking like, oh, like I knew MJ. Like you can tell the moment I saw him come out to the ring, I'm just like, this guy's got it. And for someone that excels out of a of, out of a school and and travels as much as he does, it's that's that's like a that's like a god not a, uh, God's gift, but you know what I mean. That's like he had it. Don't, yeah, don't from, blow too much smoke from birth. Ass. No, I'm not. But he had it from birth because you can't teach a lot of that stuff. Birth. He birth. had it from birth. Happy birthday. Um. Do you know anything about this situation? I know everything about this situation. I don't know if you do. Well, anyway, next week we're going to have the MLW World Heavyweight Championship defended. Tom Lawler's going to take on Avalanche Robert Dreisker. Germany. He's a German. Germany? Yeah, he's a German. No, it's not in Germany, but he's a German guy. And Ace Romero's teaming up with Barrington Hughes. I guess they melted chocolate or whatever his name is. Uh, They're taking on Fatu and Samil from uh, the Contra unit. All right. That should be a good match. I like it. We love, hey, MLW. I'm on board. I've been enjoying it. We love you guys. Like last week, like I know there was some shit that I shit on, but this week was good. No, shit. it's. I mean, we're not gonna placate to these to these companies. I mean, no. we love them. We love but, them, but we gotta we gotta call it out when we, we see it. We've talked about MLW for the last three weeks in a row. Okay, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Uh-oh. I really don't understand what's going. Like I know bottom line what's going on. We touched on it with our guest earlier with Barry Horowitz. What's going on with Adam Page and Pac? What's this nonsense that's been happening? I don't know, Matt. Uh, he, wow, Matt. Matt. Whoa! Tony. I don't know. Because you think like I'm the all elite guy, like, but I am. But you, well, you're you're Matt. an all elite expert. I'm a fucking expert on everything. We'll find out in a few. You're minutes. AWE. You're an all elite expert. A E E. You're I E. Maybe the dingo wait your baby. So Pac holds the. Dragon Dragon Gate? Gate Championship, whatever it is, the open the fart gates or something like that. That's right. Whatever it's the called. The floodgates. That's it. The floodgates. Not open the floodgates, the floodgates championship. Um so yeah, so apparently there's some nonsense going on. They wrestled and they had a draw. I saw a match that was posted on YouTube. Yeah, it was in England. Okay. Pac wrestled the main event for WrestleGate. Um Robbie was injured and Fleisch had transportation issues, so Posh, Pac issues an open challenge. Posh Spice? Posh, yes. Oh, what well, was in England, wasn't it? Uh, so Adam Page came out. They had a 15-minute draw, and then Pac was like, I'm not wrestling you anymore. Or I'm not going to AEW or some shit. It's got to be a, If it's not, like, legit, like, visa issues, it's got to be a work. 
Well, Pac is not listed as part of uh, All Elite's Double or Nothing this uh, coming weekend. So who knows, Kevin? I don't know. If that's true, and again, we don't know if it is or not, if he's not going to be there, that does that's not the first kind of impression the first like i know it's the first back step that you don't want to make as a company well here's the other problem i mean you have you have this problem like everybody's looking forward to this match. a lot of people were this was one of the big matches yeah um you had rick flair pull out of his roast and his appearance because he had surgery yeah rick's gonna be okay from from what i understand it was a routine or not a routine not a routine but medical complications per uh prolonged the date of the procedures so he will not be at Starcast. he will not be at the roast missing out on they lost undertaker and that whole debacle earlier yes before the flare thing you know and i mean Kurt Angle. look there's plenty of other shit going on but those are some pity pity that, big bitty bitty bitties bitty 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 bitties. those are some big blows not gonna lie hi not, not gonna lie no it's it's devastating well, really, no, there's really no way to, to cut it. As great as Starcast can and probably still will be. Probably. Losing I didn't say prob I didn't say probably, did you I? I said probably. God, I'm having a stroke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. As 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 big as it probably still will be, losing Ric Flair is huge. Yeah. Absolutely devastating to your imagine the refund you're probably gonna have to give. And and, and as an aside. Oh, so somebody was bitching and moaning online that they wanted a refund because the Hangman Page match wasn't happening. And so Sean Waltman gets involved and says, will somebody please give this fucking idiot his refund and shut him up? Somebody replied, you're not the puck they wanted to see anyway. Oh, boy. <laughs> fucking A, dude. Yahtzee. Real quick, before we get on to our last bits, um, the roast of Bruce Pritchard was put out on something to wrestle with's feed. The wrestlers, not great. There's a comedian in the middle. I forget his name. He oh, slaughtered good. everybody. He won last comic standing, maybe. Was it Mike Lawrence? Was yes. It? Yes. Because Mike Lawrence was scheduled for the Ric Flair roast. Oh no, not 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 last comic standing. He won some roast thing. Yeah, Mike. It's got to be a big, big bushy beard. Fu- I don't know, dude. It was audio. Oh, fair he enough. Fucking crushed. Um, yeah, every. I know, I know Mike. He hit everybody. Big passionate wrestling fan. Very oh smart guy. God. Probably one of the smartest guys I've ever met. Some of the funniest. If it's lines Mike, I ever. It's heard. it's got to be Mike. Um, I I don't kind of like kind of like low mono like low monotone way of speaking. Like he was funny though, and in yeah. the middle of it, he's like. He's like, please don't tell my wife. This is the greatest moment of my life. Could have been Dan Soder. No, it wasn't Dan Soder. Dan Soder wasn't on the bill. Although Dan Soder, it's, it's got to be funny. Mike Lawrence. It's got to be Mike Lawrence then. Uh, Shuli was there. Shuli was okay. All right. Um, and who's the other guy? That black yeah, guy. That's a comedian. Michael Che. No, no, really, not the WrestleMania guy. What the? He's been in everything. I can't think of his name. Chuck Nice. Kevin Hart. No, 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 no. A uh, little less. A little less than that. Uh, oh fuck it. Oh well. Go listen to the roast of Bruce Pritchard. Godwin, Henry Godwin. Yes. No. He, yeah, it was Phineas, his brother. Goddard. Uh, what's his name? Oh, Goddard. Maybe that was it. I don't know. Look it up. But anyway, Godford or Godfried or something like that. It wasn't Gilbert. Yeah. Hey, I was watching wrestling the other night. It's got a. Uh, you like my Gilbert Godfrey? No. I don't know. I hurt my voice doing that. Kevin, it's about that time. What? You got it? No, I'm just. Kevin, it's talking about, to talking about, to my my buddy. Uh, it's about that time. The Prince of Queens. Oh, sorry. It's time for part two of the Shiny Wizards pay per view big extravaganza thing. Covered all the wrestling double or nothing. Tony, I'm going in blind here. Kev, th- this is rough, dude, because it's an upstart company. It's their first major show, pay per view wise. Second, technically. Well, well first, wise. actually first. You're right, first. Oof. Okay, I'm just gonna take them in order that Dicky Do has them because he sent his notes. I don't want to read his notes though. Oh well, no, I have them. I'll read them. No, I I have oh, his want- notes too, but I don't want to read them because I don't want to be influenced. Okay, very first match: Adam Page versus Question Mark, Question Mark, Question Mark, Question Mark, Question Mark. He's very tough. That Question Mark, Question Mark. I question know. Mark, question Mark. Five time, twenty four seven champion. I don't. I, do we even know if Adam Page is gonna have a match? Well, Did they announce if it? he does, let's leave it at that. Well, I'm I'm. 
Are we picking this? Yes. Oh, yeah, we're picking it. I'm going with Adam Page. Yeah, we're all going with Adam Page. Matt okay. says, no idea how we're picking this match unless we wait to see who Pox, who's taking his place. Either way, I'm going in blind and taking Adam Page. So everybody's on board with Adam Page. Uh, here we go. SoCal Uncensored versus the Stronghearts. See, this show to me, you got to establish the guys that are going to be there all the time. And I'm not saying that the Stronghearts won't be there all the time, but you got to make your guys your guys. I'm going with SoCal Uncensored. SoCal Uncensored. Uh, Matt says, um, super hard to figure out. I think they need to establish these guys from China or wherever they're from. Nice, Matt. I'll gamble and take the Stronghearts. That's, that's not a bad pick. I mean, there's only two, but that's not... That's and who did you take? You took SoCal? I took SoCal. Well, Matt's going to have to listen to this anyway. You know what? As much as I like Sema, I know who he is. I'm not sure who Al Lindemann and T-Hawk are. But we're going into their first show. You got to go with the guys that you know and love. SoCal Uncensored, that's my pick. Yep. Okay. Uh, here we go. Britt Baker versus Nyla Rose versus Kylie Ray in a three-way match. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I'll go with Matt first. Matt says, these are hard to pick, especially when you don't know when they're going. I'll take Britt Baker for the win. Kevin. I think Britt Baker has the gimmick, has the the more established name. I'm going Dr. Britt Baker. Really? Yeah. I'm going against you guys. I'm going Kylie Nyla Ray. Rose. Nyla Rose? I'm going Nyla Rose. Smart pick. You don't you don't hype up the first transgendered wrestler, not give him give him. I don't no, know. I don't know what I, I still don't know what Give Nyla a big win here. I'm thinking Nyla. So I don't hate that pick. F all y'all. I don't hate that pick. I just think Britt Baker is the is the the face of that women's division. Okay, here we go. The next one he has. Are we picking the battle royal? I say no, but if we are, we are, Matt. I'm taking Jimmy Havoc. Kevin, this is who I've got so far. All right. Sunny Kiss, Brandon Color, Ace Romero, Glacier, Brian Pillman Jr., Sunny Days, MJF, Joey Janela. Dustin Thomas, Billy Gunn, Jimmy Havoc, Michael Nakazawa, Jungle Boy, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, Luchasaurus, Sean Spears, and a bunch of TBAs. Sean, Ty Dillinger's in this match. Sean Spears? Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. I didn't know that. Who are you going with? I'm torn between Jungle Boy, Brian Pillman Jr., MJF, and Janela. Well, that's not tearing. That's a choice. That's a four square. Um, I will go with. Joey Janela. Janela. Okay, Matt took Jimmy Havoc. I'm taking MJF. That's my pick. I think that guy's got star written all over him. This I really is a think it's going to be Brian Pillman Jr., though. But I'm, a, but I'm staying with Joey Janela. It's a casino battle royal, by the way, which means five people start, and then five more come in, and then five more come in, and then the last guy comes in. It's going to be a clusterfuck, but hopefully it's good. Uh, I don't know. Is, is this Matt texting me on the uh, thing? Ron Funches. That was the comedian. Thank you, Matt. Um, okay. Kip Savian versus Sammy Guevara. This is a pre-show, but well, but we're also picking it. I'm going with Sammy Guevara. I think that kid's a stud. I like the I like the shit out of his match at NWA 70. I haven't seen too much of him since then. Wasn't he also? He might have been in the national tournament, but I'm not sure. But I'm going with Sammy Guevara. Matt also says Sammy Guevara. He's one of the top young dudes in the game. Kip is great, but I'm taking Sammy. Kevin. I'll I'll play devil's advocate and go Kip. Wow, Kevin's going Kipper, Kipper Moniker, whatever his name is. Just because uh, it's no fun if we all pick the same person. Best sometimes. friends versus Angelico and Jack Evans. The best friends, of oh course, are Chuck God. Taylor and Trent. This Ooh. might steal the freaking show. This could very potentially, yes, steal the show. I want me to give you Matt's pick first. No, no. Okay. Let me pick first. No, no. Go ahead. I haven't read Matt's yet. Oh, you haven't? No, I, I haven't seen I haven't seen this one yet. Oh, you uh, okay, go ahead. I will go best friends. Best friends. Okay, good call. That was my call. Matt says both teams are dynamite, and this falls in the same category as a six man. I'll take Angelico and Jack Evans. I don't hate the pick. I, I don't, really don't. I don't hate it either. These are, dude. These are tough. This uh -huh. is gonna be this show because you don't know what it. You don't know. It's you don't know where they want to go with who, with the these place. guys. You'd figure they want to go with their boys, but that's just like an old school mentality. So I, I don't know. Aja Kong, Yuka Sazazaki, and Imi Sakura versus Ryo Minuza Mizunami, Riho, and Haraku Shida. Whew, that's a mouthful. Six women's tag team match. I love Aja Kong. She's been a fucking legend. The other guys with her, women with her. You know what? I'm going for Aja Kong's team. That's what I'm going with. Kev? It's rough, dude. I'm a terrible I wrestling fan. I don't know who any of these people are. <laughs> Some of them are from like Ice Ribbon and like the cutesy ones that like Dave Mega Powers would know. He um, would probably have been the expert to yeah, ask on this. We, that's but. who we should have consulted with. Um, 
I'll go Aja Kong's team. So it's Aja Kong's team across the board. There you go. The Young Bucks versus the Lucha Brothers. The Young Bucks defending their Triple A Tag Team Championship. Matt, uh, you know what? I'll go with my pick first. I was torn on this one. I originally was going to go with the Young Bucks, but I'm thinking Lucha Brothers, they're stars. They're signed with them now. They are, as they say, Kevin, all in. Ah. So I'm going Lucha Brothers, regain the championships on the on American soil. Young Bucks go down. You, Who do you think? You think they... You got to do the right thing sometimes, and the right thing might be putting over the Lucha Brothers. Um... Just because you want to show that just because you run the company, you're not going to win every match. And to start that off, it might be might be fine to put them over. I am going with the Young Bucks, though. And Matt's going with them, too. This is going to be an awesome match, a hard one to pick. Thanks for saying that every time, dickhead. I'm going with the no, Young it, Bucks. All these matches are fucking hard to pick. No, no, I know, but he's saying every time. We are running up on the time, but we're going to get these in real quick. Oh, that's right, because the rant's coming up. Two big matches. Cody versus Dustin. Oh, God. I know. Cody. I know. Cody. I'm taking Cody, too. It's Cody across the board. Another toss-up I can't stress. Not knowing where they're going it makes it hard to pick. Take Cody to kill the Attitude Era. Okay. This one I'm still not sure of. And this is the main event. This is. The, I'll tell you exactly where I stand Kenny on this. Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho. I go Chris Jericho. 100% Chris Jericho. Really? Yep. Not, not a doubt in my mind. You see, Matt said this is going to be the best match of the night, and as crazy as this one sounds, they're going to build around Young Guys and Chris Jericho. You need Chris Jericho to come off strong. In Jericho this match. wins, sets up the third match down the road. You know what? I was thinking about it. I was leaning toward Jericho. I'm going to go Kenny Omega. Out of boy, what did Matt? What did Matt pick? Matt, Matt picked Jericho. All right. I'm going Kenny Omega. I'm thinking you're going to make a big impression on the American crowd with Kenny Omega. That guy's going to be the star of the company. Oh, you got to get him off on the right foot. Yeah, that's what's. And I'm doing it just to be a dick to no, you. No, no, you're right about that though. It's again this this since we don't know a whole lot about what this company is going to be, it's tough to pick. It is what it is, folks. Thank you for joining us. We want to thank again our guest, Mr. Barry Horowitz. Oh, so much fun! Please enjoy your weekend. Enjoy everything that's happening with All Elite. Enjoy the pay per view. Enjoy StarCast if you tune into it. Let us know what you thought. and Enjoy Legends it. next. I mean, we'll be back before Legends. Yeah, we'll be back still. before Legends. Do you have anything to plug before we get out of here? La, 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 la. Um, Wait, let me let me give you some music. Wait, let me No, I don't, really. No? You don't want music? Uh, I mean, uh, the Brown Bear Pub, West Orange, our comedy series returns next Wednesday. Um, next Thursday, I'll be at WrestlePro. Next Friday, I'll, I might be shooting down to Atlantic City for Game Changer. Woo! Um, but other than that... Stay tuned for some potential big news from the Shining Wizards. Um, not gonna let any K-fay, bro. K-fay. any cat out of the bag yet, but wow. but just stay tuned. That's it. Don't forget the Pro Wrestling Tees sale this week. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Shining Wizards. Pick up a shirt of ours. Pick up anybody's shirts. Support guys on the network. They have shirts too. Support everybody we know. They all have shirts. Nice time. I got a shirt. You got a shirt. Everybody gets, gets a, a shirt. shirt. That's such a corny joke. Stay tuned on the rant. The rant is up next. It's always weird saying that, but uh, I guess that's it. Say goodnight, Kevin. Good night, Kevin. Oh, God damn awful. Hey, hey, we didn't have a uh, going home tonight either. No.